What up, what up? The Rose Podcast ever. It's episode 26. It's your boy C. Diddy. I'm uh, the Ron Harper of podca- podcasting. Matt. <laughs> no makes me sick. <laughs> Just Matt. Just Matt. How will they find you on social media? Well, st- I'm still <laughs> Matt makes me sick on social media. For the time being. <laughs> For the time being. Until I find out who owns the... He's, uh, he's still uh, surveying the, the Mets that are out there on Instagram. Yeah. Trying to see if he can get his name. I really just want that name. Like, <laughs> M-A-T-T. Like, that's what I want. Yeah. But, you know. Like, y- at YG. You just want at Matt. Yeah. Somebody else has one that's pretty basic like that. Um, Can't think who it is. But somebody I know has, like, a basic-ass at name on Instagram. Yeah. And, like, they got a huge following with this shit. Yeah, they probably paid for it. Yeah, probably definitely paid for it. You might got to DM this Matt and see what's going on here. Like, yeah. hey, my man, you got 35 followers. No, he's got like a lot. He's got like thousands. Oh, well, you, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> Big bank, take little bank in that case, then. You're done. I'm about to tell you right now. Uh, Matt. Yeah, Andre Iguodala is Andre. Andre. There you go. Yeah, yeah I knew yeah. I saw one before. He used to be at AI9, and he changed it to Andre. Oh, see, I saw a different Matt. The other, the just M-A-T-T has yeah. 9,600 followers. You might got a barter. Yeah. But like, hey, you got 9,600 followers. I got a podcast with uh, half a million downloads. Let's trade. You could just you could be Matt makes me sick. CEO Matt. I could get that one. That's available? Yeah. You think it's available until you go to get it. Right. And then, and then you be like, where did this come from? A, a guy from Idaho with four followers has the name. <laughs> it's, it's always the Idahoans. That, uh, that have the names. Uh, we have a special guest uh, doing the show with us today, uh, financial expert, entrepreneur, uh, Jamel Kendall. Introduce yourself, sir. Hey, what's going on? It's Jamel Kendall. You just did it. You definitely <laughs> introduced him. And then said introduce yourself. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I, I <laughs> <laughs> There's more to you than just your name. It definitely is more <laughs> to me than just my name. But, Matt, you're going to do what I went through from before. You know, I was Kendall Seventh Street. Right. I had to come off that name. You know what I'm saying? I think when you evolve and come to a different person, you know what I mean? You have to change to make that name reflect you. Well, see, your ad name was Kendall Seventh Street for reasons far different than my name is Matt Makes Me Sick. Well, you made me sick, so <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> it was relevant. I mean, it made sense. It, was it made total sense. But I just feel like at this point in my life, I don't make people sick. But yeah, no, no, uh, no white couple from Bristol is giving uh, Kendall Seven Street. Yeah, their money. yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely, like, like definitely. J- J- Jamel, I like you, but uh, this Kendall Seven Street character. We've uh, read <laughs> magazine articles about Seven Street. We've read up on him. <laughs> the longest block ever. <laughs> but no, like you said, you know, my name is Jamel Kendall, uh, entrepreneur. Definitely, um, I've been uh, in business for myself for quite some years now. Uh, I branched off from corporate world, so I cut the plug, so to speak, you know what I mean, stuck in the matrix. But now I'm out here trying to educate people on the things that um, you learn to work for people to do, right? Financial literacy is very key in our neighborhoods. We lack it. And I'm on a mission to be able to go out and teach our communities and our families and our friends or whoever is willing to listen um, about the importance of being able to manage your money and understand how to uh, retire comfortably or even just retire. Because most people is not retiring these days. No. You're absolutely right. Without a doubt. And uh, we just felt like this was a real important show to have. Uh, we've been <clears throat> kind of like talking about it for a while now, probably since like episode 10. Like mm-hmm. I brought the the idea to Matt about doing a financial literacy episode because um, it's something that's literally not taught to us at any stage of life. Like our parents weren't taught it. And 95% of the time our parents weren't taught it, so they don't teach it to us. The schools don't teach it. Um outside of like oh you need to get a bank account mm-hmm. and it's like that's like the extent of it like i remember being in like third grade and uh my elementary school took us to Berean bank to open bank accounts and then after that i didn't hear shit else for the next nine years about anything related to finances and forgot that i had that twenty dollars in that account and it was like yo if uh, this is compounded with any type of interest i should have at least 31 dollars in this bank account and uh the bank closed down so yo, <laughs> there is no tw- there is no 31 dollars for you the teacher was a co-owner in the bank <laughs> twenty dollars from every one of you it's a ponzi scam <laughs> But you make a good point, though. I rode past on um, Broad and Snyder the other day, and it was a Wendy's, right? It used to be beneficial. Yeah. And I, I remember my aunt took me to there when I was young, like three years old. Yeah. And we started what we call, I think it was like a school toddler front or something. Yeah. And I literally, I remember when I cashed it out, I had $20 that was in there. Because <laughs> I guess that's what you start yeah, with. Yeah, right. That's what you start with. That's what you end with. It never grew to anything. I, I, I haven't been to Broad and Snyder 
years. Yeah. Damn. It's a Wendy's. It's like a two tier level Wendy's. Yeah, because I remember beneficial. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. But you made a good point though. So, you know, we talked about they don't teach us finance in, in high schools. And I try to tell people a lot of times that it's only well, it was only four states that was mandated to teach financial literacy before you graduate high school. They just added another one, which was uh Maryland. I think it's Alabama, West Virginia, Utah, Wyoming. Yeah. And you figure if you're in a tri-state area, you don't learn financial literacy. Yeah, you're literally not learning. Not right. learning. Well, they're not even mandated to teach you. Right. But if you think about it, if you went to a vocational school, they taught you shop. They taught you, you know, cosmetology. Mm-hmm. You had, and is I think it's over 50% mandated that they have to teach you sexual education. Yeah. Now, you figure like this. If you grow up in a poor household, more than likely you're going to learn poor concepts. Right. If you grow up in a rich household, more than likely right. you'll learn rich concepts. Yeah, damn, how about it? And then if you don't even have even one of those type of knowledges paths, then you have to learn from trial and error, and that's very, very costly. It's right. expensive to learn life when it comes to money. I went to Saw. I remember we had to take ag mechanics, and I remember we were in there, and they were welding uh, shit onto a tractor. And I remember Mr. S was a teacher. He was like, Matt, you don't want to come over and see this? I'm like, I am not going to be doing any of this shit in the next couple of years. It's right. like, it makes no sense, but I had to take the class. Right. So. But you deal with money every day. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and, and and nobody teaches you anything. And unfortunately, you know, like kind of going back to like the parental part of it, you have certain like white families or afflu- other affluent families or whatever that it's the complete opposite of what you learn in the black household. So they kids start life with a head start because they know about authorized user accounts and adding right. them to their credit and all mm-hmm. of that stuff. So right. they kid turn eighteen, they got eight hundred credit score. Whereas in the black household, you turn eighteen, you like you damn near bankrupt because your parents <laughs> name had on, the on bills Whatever. and shit. Yeah. Because your parents are so overextended with credit that they looking for all right. Well, who in here got a clean slate right. on some credit? Right. And they adding you the shit that you don't got nothing to do with. You four years old, and the cable and the water bill is in your name. So it's like it's the complete opposite. And it's like you know those little things and the, and learning those habits and them becoming a part of your behaviors going forward can change a lot of our fate in terms of the black community because financial empowerment is everything and financial freedom is everything it is and it, you got to think too we we learn little nuggets of what people do that like affluent or wealthy right so somebody say well you use credit card to build credit but they don't tell you the steps that you have to take to maintain that right, right? Yeah. so we go get a credit card but we're not educated on the process right yeah. so then what happens is now you're using credit cards for a lifestyle yeah. and then you stop right it's like a GPA. You get a 4.0 in the first semester. If you get to see the next one, it's going to take you three years to get back to right. a 4.0. Exactly. It's just hard to climb back uphill. So the issue is that we have to make sure that if we're learning these other things, let's say, it's like to me, it's like a Twitter. It's like it's like a tweet, right? News is getting over with just headlines. Nobody is even reading the article. Yo, I just had that conversation. Yo, I just had that conversation the other day with somebody, and it was like very frustrating. I'm just like, yo, you try to engage me in conversation every single day, right? But you don't have no backstory to what you're engaging me about. So I got to carry the conversation every single time. You're almost like using me for like information. Right. I'm like, if you would just take the extra four seconds to either Google the article that you just looked at or to click the fucking link that you have, you would open yourself up to a whole new world of information right. and you wouldn't even have to ask me about this at, shit. At all. At all. And that's the problem, right? So we learn about these things. Somebody say, well, look, I want to go get a house. And somebody say, well, I know from what I know, somebody told me that you have to get a credit card. You have to do this. You have to have this. And then you go do these things, but you don't know the back, like you said, the back exactly. end of everything that really makes up the whole entire story. Right. So then you end up messing yourself up trying to do the right thing. Your intentions yeah. is there. But then you get caught on along the, down the way trying to figure out the rest because nobody is not leading you to hold your hand through the whole process. And, you know, mistakes happen. And it just said, my prime example is you see the meme floating around about the, the Kardashian line, right? Yeah. Where is it? Right. It's not on there. I had this conversation with somebody. I said, you know, did you listen to the yeah, album? Fake news is a real thing. It's, it's, <laughs> exactly. It's not on there. So we spread a lot of, you know, half truths or lies, complete, complete lies. And it's really costing generations, generations, generations to be wealthy. Yeah. And it has to change. And it's like the news that dominated this week was uh, 
you know, the, the Kardashian line about the Jay-Z album. Meanwhile, right here in this city, some real shit took place. The former district attorney of the city went to jail. He went he went to go make a plea, and they took his ass to jail mm-hmm. because they said that they couldn't trust him to show up for sentencing because he sold his office to the highest bidder. So this is real shit that's going on in the city that, that affects everybody, that affects policy, that affects leadership. And nobody's not sharing that shit or talking about that shit. Wait, they took they took him to jail. To the jail. Yes, the same day. He pleaded guilty for his for his deal. <laughs> he was supposed to come back October twenty fourth for sentencing, and the judge said, "I can't trust you to come back here for sentencing, yep. so I'm going to lock you up today. You're remanded to the court." It's another prime example Damn, of them Seth. treating us how you know we they want to treat us. So at the end of the day, you fall into the game. This is another thing I said. You fall into that game, trying to play a game that was never meant for you, and they're going to make sure all this over a couch. <laughs> and a <laughs> roof. <laughs> That's what he got. He got a new roof and a couch. That's like, it was less than a million dollars worth of stuff. I yeah. mean, I feel like with your influence and your power, you could have went into the to our communities and built teams of whatever. Right. That would have created residual income. It could have raised that for you. In, in Legally. <laughs> So Damn, son. it happens. So so I say that to say it's like, yo, people will share some shit that's not true, mm-hmm. but not even talking about something that directly affects them, their family, this policy in the city, and gives you a precedent of how even when we on the right side of the law, when we do something wrong, how we get thrown in the bushes as opposed to what happens when you on a when you when 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 you are are a different skin color or a different ethnicity? Right. How they treat you when you know faced with the same situations and the same scenarios. Right. So it's like people got to be more careful what they're willing to converse about and share to other people because that shit is like is is harmful. Like and it's like you can get caught up in that matrix of just like sharing bullshit all day, all day, all day, mm-hmm. and you poisoning your brain. And it's like yo. You, you don't know what's real from what's fake and what's right from what's wrong because you get so so caught up in headlines and just sharing I mean, that's, I told fake you before. News. It's like that's why I've literally gotten with Twitter and Instagram. It's like when I see anything, I back out of the app. You have to. You the, the it's a big button at the bottom of your yeah. phone. <laughs> <laughs> like you can hit that and get away from the app. Go to Google and figure the shit out for yourself. Right. You'd be surprised how many like you'll see yo. 81 girls got kidnapped in 24 hours, and you back out and hit the link, and like, that it's a porno that. site. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing behind this shit. And, but people don't. It's like they see that, take it to Instagram, post it with their own dumbass caption. Right. And somebody screenshots that with the caption, and they it, it's, it's, it's bananas. And that next thing you know is 80 different stories to a fake story. That shit is bonkers to me. It just yeah. doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, we, you know, we just kind of, you know, opened the conversation up just kind of just talking in general, you know, some backstory stuff or whatever like that. What do you feel like are like the basics to financial literacy? What are the main handful of things that people need to understand if they just a layman or if it's somebody that's 17 years old trying to like figure this thing out? I think honestly, and people will probably say that because they feel as though I'm an expert that I'm saying this, but finance is not complex at all. First and foremost, right? But if I had to break it down to his lamest terms, when you think about finances, there's only four main cornerstones that you really have to learn, right? It's just four. The first one is protection. What do you want to protect, though? Obviously, you want to protect everything, right? right? All your assets. The second thing is if you have money, you want it to do what? Grow. Right. And once it's growing, you want to be able to put a safety net on it, which is the third you know, cornerstone. And then when you go to access that money, you want to make sure you have, you want to make sure you maximize your tax advantages, right? So we already know you got the administration right now, like Donald Trump leading that way. And we know that before he became president, this is all of what these people fight for is taxes because you pay a lot in taxes. People don't realize how much money goes to the government and to the states for taxes, right? But it's real real money and it's real money and people are just so accustomed to just paying it, paying it, paying it, right. that they don't realize, like, yo, if you had half of that money back or whatever, or a third of like, that yo, money back, what else could you check do? after taxes, Whew. that shit is abysmal. Yeah, so this is, this, 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 uh, is like this, in a week, I stressful. earn 24, whatever it is, then when you see the net, and that should start with a nine, you like, <laughs> right, I know this shit don't say 9,000. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy at how much money go to taxes. It's yeah. insane. And you, you know, the ta- you know, especially when you're thinking about a paycheck, you got taxes and deductions. Yeah. So your health, and well, you don't pay health, right? We do now. Okay. Uh, 1%? It, 
one percent. We do now. Because <laughs> nah, that was huge that we got to pay the one percent. That was huge. I saw. I had we, to walk the word. You bowled that over for weeks. <laughs> it was huge, yeah. <laughs> My shoes ain't got no soul. Yeah. We definitely won't strike for that. That and the uh, the pension now we pay fifty dollars a week. So oh that my was, goodness! Yeah, that's the last fucking fifty nine dollars. But you check. you have to understand, like I said, in just to sum it up in layman's terms, financial concepts is simple. It's four cornerstones: it's protection, then it's growth, then it's safety, and then it's tax advantages, right? But then you're speaking about uh, things like that, right? So coming back from let's say the baby boomers era. It was a three-legged stool, mm -hmm. right? You had pensions. That's why, you mm -hmm. know, to bring it up when you said pensions, you had Social Security, and then you had personal savings, right? right? Pensions, you know, you were blessed to have a pension. Do you realize that, yeah, right? Yeah, I was reading an article the other day about it, like how the pensions are, like, you know, every, they're trying to, like, basically get everyone away from that. Yeah, thing. eliminate it. Like, all the, even the new people in my job, like, they don't even got the pension thing now. It's like a... Uh, Y'all have accepted. Y'all have 457 B. 457, exactly. But know. this is what they doing. They converting pensions into like retirement cases. Yeah. For, and basically, what they doing is they saying, well, look, instead of having a pension, we'll give you a 403 B or 457 A or 401 K, and then that way we'll match you, yeah, right? Exactly. And then when you retire, you cash out. Yeah. Here's the thing about that. One of the main reasons why they getting away from pensions is because people are living longer. Mm -hmm. Before you. 65 years old, you, you retire, and they got to pay you. you. Some people die 70. Some people, people die, die 66. Oh. 66. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? So my grandpa, no bullshit, my grandpa, he retired from Coca-Cola in 1983, the year before I born. Mm -hmm. He's alive and healthy. Like, I said, uh, he's 93. I'm like, I know they be pissed. Like, <laughs> call in the crib. He, Hello? Shit. Because <laughs> they still paying it. But, but think about the, the dynamic of that. Now they have to pay that 20, 30. The average life expectancy for a woman today is 85 years old. Right. 20 years of pension? So now they're trying to get away from that because it's costing them a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So pensions used to be guaranteed, right? Used to have a, a substantial amount of income coming in on retirement. So now you can't count pensions. Now, two, because the baby boomers are retiring, you can't really consider Social Security for people that's like 35, like anywhere between 35 and 42 or at least under that because we are paying into Social Security, but it might not be available for us when we retire. Yeah. And even if it was, it's going to be pennies on a dollar. Yeah. So the last thing you have to focus on is personal savings. And that's the three-legged stool. So right. in terms of the concept of finance, these are the things people should focus on. Personal savings, right? Now, when you get into personal savings, you have to understand that, for one, thinking about taxing, you work 40 hours a week, 40 years. You're the last person to get paid. Uncle Sam get his off the top. That net, to me, is the word crumb. You take whatever is left, right? right. And then from there, you have to decide what you got to do. The first thing you should be doing is paying yourself first. People think, no, I got bills. I need to pay the bills first. No, you pay yourself first. You save, and then you pay your bills with whatever is left. Now, for some people, it's hard to fathom that concept because they say, well, look, I'm not about to save money and then get my electric cut off. The fact of the matter is we're already not paying our bills anyway. Right, exactly. But the whole thing is it's supposed to regulate your lifestyle. You're supposed to have a budget on that. That's why you pay yourself first. Right. And then you're supposed to be able to live off of whatever you have left. It's supposed to be according to your lifestyle. Real quick, talk about that. Talk about the concept of people living above their means, to their means, and below their means, and how different their quality of life can be depending on where they are <sighs> on the scale. That's a great, that's a great topic. The, the, the main thing you have to understand is the only thing we had in insight when it comes to social influence was MTV Crips. Right. That was really the only thing outside of tabloids to understand how these people was really living. Mm -hmm. When they came out with Twitter, we didn't even really understand at first how Twitter even worked. Like right. if you only could be on Twitter unless you was a celebrity. And then they came out with Instagram. So you have Twitter. You get to follow people what they say. And now you get to follow people from what they post in terms of what you see. Yeah. Now you have a false reality of what life is supposed to be like. So automatically, if you follow people that you look up to, let's say, I don't want to say their names, but let's just say celebrities, right? <laughs> then you're going to start to spin towards that lifestyle. And we can't we can admit, if you want a certain type of collar or let's say woman, then you know you need to have a certain type of collar or car. So you're going to risk it all to be able to do those things. Right. But it's really hurtful because when I sit down with somebody and I'm going over a financial plan for them, when I tell them they have to budget out their Starbucks, if I say $5 a week, Right, that's twenty. I mean, five dollars a day. That's twenty-five dollars a week. A hundred dollars, 
uh, you know, about four hundred dollars a month, right? Yeah. On a five day work week, like yeah. a little bit more than that. Let's just say is uh, is four hundred dollars a month. If you start to times that by twelve, and then times that by the whole time you working at that job, that's a college fund. That's a retirement right. plan. You can wonder, retire I, off of not. I, I wonder if Lee is out there listening. She's a <laughs> Starbucks fanatic. <laughs> and anybody that you talk to, they're gonna tell you five dollars is cheap mm-hmm. t- for Starbucks. It's at least eight to twelve dollars. Yeah. Every pop you yeah, go so in. You, so you basically saying if you're going in there spending twelve, spend seven and put five towards paying yourself. Absolutely not. What I'm saying is, if I go and I show you the money you spend in year form, yeah, basically you, you just know, wouldn't do it at all. You wouldn't do it. You would make coffee at home. That's the whole key. You have to be self sufficient, meaning that you can't be dependent on these fast food spots. Now, a big part of the reason why people eat the way they eat is because they don't plan their days out. So, yeah, I definitely take agree with that. Right? So, if you spend, let's say, 10, 20 minutes at home at night before the next day, right? You know, I got, I got to work this many hours. This is my lunchtime. And you can say, well, look, I'm going to prepare my food. That, f- that lunch that you bring is going to save you pretty much a 30 year mortgage over time. Now, the goal is when you're saving money, you're supposed to have it into an account. That's going to give you a re- return on your investment anywhere between 6 to 10%. And that's what's going to make the difference. Right. So you wait 10 years, you can spend Starbucks money with compound interest money as opposed to your principal. Right. Right? So at the end of the day, the lifestyle, people buying all these other things is because they don't see the benefit of retirement. And that's why when it comes time to plan for 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 retirement or whatever case may you whatever case you need, it becomes very expensive. I think at a certain extent though, like you got to do what makes you happy. If that makes any sense. Like you you want certain things, you want to go certain places, you want to do certain things. So I think that falls into why people do certain things. Like people just fall into a routine. I know people who literally go to certain restaurants, certain mm-hmm. places every single morning, every night. They it's just a routine. So it's like you I, I think that um I would agree with you if we was born into wealth. I I, I see what you're saying from that aspect. The the re- main reason why we continuously to be poor in our communities is because we want what we want now. Right. Nobody is willing to sacrifice for our kids. And we or won't, even our kids we won't kids. break none of the bad habits. We won't. We say, well, look, mama need a life too. Papa need new shoes and all these other cool things that we get into. But that's the reason. And then here's another thing. We wait till it's too late, right? We wait till we have to plan. You know, somebody die, and then now all of a sudden they feel as though they need insurance. Right. It's, we, you know, it can't be that way. Now, I get what you're saying. It's good to be able to treat yourself to nice things. But it has to come with the, knowing that when you live this lifestyle, it's going to take away from when you want to have those easier years, you know, going forward. So you have It's to, difficult. Like, planning out everything is... is like, last week, I, I was telling him, like, I literally was like, yo, I ain't going to spend no money today at work. I'm going to go out there. I took stuff with me. I'm going to go not spend no money. My bus broke down at Broad and Carpenter. Yo, I walked out right in. I had a sugar stroke. <laughs> like, 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 I was sitting there buying all kinds of silly shit. And it's like, it's hard. It's, it's extremely hard because it's like you see things you want. You're like, man, I'm going to go get this shirt. I'm going to get that hat. I'm going to get this whatever. And, and I feel like people work so hard that it's like, yo, when I get a second, like you said, Paying yourself first. Mm-hmm. People, it's people who literally don't do that ever. Ever. Like people get paid, they check, pay their bills, and go back to work. Yeah. That's literally it. Yeah. And, but that's not life. And here's another thing, right? You do work hard, and, and you, you do want to do good things for you. But if you feel as though you try to save and then you don't save, your why is not big enough. It's not just as simple as saving money because you can. It no, has I to be for saying. a reason. Because there's a lot of people, they say, I, when I sit down with them, one of the questions I ask them, I said, are you on a savings plan? They say, no. I said, are you on a budget plan? They said, no. I said, well, do you feel like it's hard or difficult for you to save money? They say, yeah. And I look, and they had a house. And I said, I know for sure that whatever that real estate agent, that realtor told you to do to right. get that house, you did you it. Did it. <laughs> because your why was big enough. Mm-hmm. You ha- It has to be purpose. Everything has to be a purpose. If you Somebody said, well, I tried to save $25, right? And it was too much. I said, well, if you had to dip into your stash, even though you were saving $25 a month, then there was too much you were saving. It should have been $10. Savings is not just based off of just a number that you just come up with. No, it's all about calculations. When I sit down with people, I have to go through a whole picture of everything. What's your expenses? What you bringing in? What you spending out? And then from there, you can get those numbers. But people don't sit down with a financial professional. Right. For one, it costs. It costs a lot of money. You go to Merrill Lynch, you go to TD Ameritrade, or you go to Charles Schwab or something like that. Even J.P. Morgan, when I worked there in the private banking section, they charge a lot of money for you to sit down with them just to consult. 
Right, just to tell you that what you're doing is wrong, even though you know what you're doing <laughs> is wrong. But, but for us, for somebody else to stamp it like, yo, you're definitely doing this wrong. Right. It's going it, to cost you a couple thousand dollars. It's going to literally cost you a couple thousand. And here it is. I'm sitting in the neighborhood. I'm, I got an office in South Philly. I got one in Chinatown, too. But I do it for free. And it's hard for people to even want to come because right. they don't see the importance. But the goal is to be able to meet as many, reach as many people as I can and sit down with whoever is willing to listen to sit down. This stuff costs a lot of money. I could charge a lot of money for this stuff, but I try to bring it to the neighborhoods because I know that if you had to choose between going to Cancun or Miami or sitting down with a financial professional and it costs money, you're going to go to Miami every time. Every time. Yeah, I, it was crazy <laughs> when you was just now like, I got an office in Chinatown. I'm like, damn, I want something from David's. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm going to swing down to David's and come back to your office before I leave Chinatown. Like, damn, that's just what went through my head just now. That's oh, how man. you can definitely be bad when you're trying to be good, though. It's, in the office, it's on 10th and race, too. So it's that's on the crazy, same block. yeah. 10, mm-hmm. 20 race, yep. Uh, real quick, talk about the importance of... You take coverage. Talk mm-hmm. about the importance of insurances, life, car, homeowners, things that people need, mm-hmm. but a lot of us don't have for whatever reason. Okay. So first and foremost, when it comes to insurance, we have a, a, a big misunderstanding of how it works, right? So when you think about insurance, let's say life insurance, there's two types of life insurance. It's term and then it's permanent life insurance, right? Ter- term is you have a certain amount of protection for a certain amount of years. At the age and the health that you are, they rate you, and then they decide this is what your premium is. After that, let's say, 30-year term is up, you got to get rated at the health and the age you are when they become extremely expensive. Mm-hmm. Whereas permanent insurance, it lasts forever, however long you live in, as long as you pay the premium. The difference is that you have the benefit to be able to grow cash value accumulation within the life insurance. So it don't just become a death benefit, it become a life benefit okay. as well, right? Where you can access this money, and depending on if you follow the rules, it could be 100% tax free. And this money could be used for anything. It's, for, it's it, you know, it's, it's liquid in the sense that if you want to use it for college, if you want to use it for retirement, any trips, if you want to start a business or even buy a home, it's not the same rules that, let's say, a 401k or a 457a yeah. or b have, right? You don't have those 59 and a half rules, right? Right. The thing you is, you gotta make an excuse to get your money, right? Right. But the thing is, everything else is kind of like mandated in our minds. Like, all right, if I have a car by le- by state legally, I have to have car insurance. So that's taken care of. But we got insurance on our cell phones. It's like ten dollars a month, and if it's in the first six months, your deductible is still two hundred and twenty something dollars. Yeah. After the first year, it's still like one fifty, and then after two years, it's so on and so forth. I'm like, you can self fund for that. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? The importance is that people don't understand. That's why people don't get into a lot of things in right. life, right? But we'll have home insurance because they tell us to get home insurance. We have car insurance because they told us legally we have to have it. And all the rest of the other insurances that we have, like phone and, you know, that type of stuff, we just get it just because that's what people do. But when it comes to health insurance, it's like, ah, my job don't offer it. I don't need Obamacare. Like, I'm just going to be cool. Right. I remember I got shot, right? Now, I don't really share the story a lot with a lot of people, but I had got shot before. I was, I think maybe it was 2004. I was probably like uh, 17, 18, right? And I had no life insurance. I mean, no, no health insurance. And they, the cop told me it was this fund that you can call and go to and write. And they paid my bills. It was like $4,000. I'm like, if I didn't have health insurance, then how was I going to pay for that? Right. But we don't, we don't see the importance of the maintaining of health and life. And, and they have to think about life insurance is if you become disabled and you can't work and you get hurt outside of work, that insurance don't pick up on you, then what you going to do? How do you protect that income right. if you ever can't work again? Yeah, I didn't really respect insurance until I actually, like, got older and, mm-hmm. you know, start using it more and more. Like, mm-hmm. And I see just how insurances work. Right. I was telling my girl when I, uh, you know, I popped my Achilles a couple of years ago. So I, I remember. booting all that on. And I went to the uh, orthopedist and my co-payment was $5. Mm-hmm. And whatever, she was like, you know, it's $5. I paid it and sat down. Then this dude came, and he had a boot on whatever. And she's like, okay, yeah, your your co-payment for the day is $125. He's like, okay, great, whatever. I'm like, I wish that (laughs) bitch would have told me $125. (laughs) (laughs) I would have lost it in here. You would have hill told in that (laughs) job. But it's just crazy. And and those are the co-payments. So it's like, you you already know what it is outside of that. You know, it's it's insane. I just had a a root canal. Oh, yeah. 
I'm talking about thousands. Yeah. And I, I actually cracked the tooth and I need to get an implant. And my insurance paid a little bit of it, but all in all, it was 3600 out of pocket. And, mm. it, and that's with the insurance. Yeah, insurance right. And she was like, yeah, the insurance doesn't really cover implants or whatever. But yeah, the root canal, it's like four grand. Yeah. And it's just like, damn. Like and The dental is, is usually 80, 20 at best. It's crazy. So you think if you're paying 34, 3600, that might be 20, 30 percent. Right. Mm. But, you know, we young, right? We think we're going to live. It's, it's, it's crazy because on one hand, we live every day like it's our last. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, we live like we're going to live forever. Right. It's the weirdest thing right. ever. But we don't prepare or plan for any of those things. And then they want to say, well, hey, every time I meet a Jewish person, how come they got so much money? It's like, dude, you know what they did all their life? They spent money on insurance. Somebody died. They split that money and right. reinsured their family, and then they put the rest into businesses and so on and so forth. And property and, and property and everything else. Things that accrue value as opposed to depreciating assets. And their core values is based off of their culture, which is embedded within their religion, and that's why they're able to say, forget those things. Yeah, I work hard, but I don't need those things right now. I know my, my kids and their kids' kids need those things, so we're going to just work, do what we need to do, make sure we build businesses, and continuously to progress through generations. We're not willing to do that. Yeah. I'm 32 years old. I want a Bentley tomorrow. Right. My son can wait. As a whole, I think the biggest problem that black people have when it comes to like financial stability and potential freedom is that nobody's willing to sacrifice now for the next generation. Right. Everybody just wants what they want when they want it. Right. And it's like, all right, Jay Z got a phenomenal album out right now and he's talking about a lot of these different principles and stuff like that that me and you talked about Mm -hmm. and that, you know, conversations that I'm sure you have every single day with people. And now it's more palatable because he's saying it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this is not nothing new. At all. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, at some point somebody gotta take the stance to say, Hey, we gonna do X, Y, and Z so that for the greater good of everybody, right. or for the vast majority. Right. Like imagine if Bob Johnson, Jay Z, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Beyonce, all these people came together and said, "All right, we gonna focus on these three industries. We are gonna invest four hundred million here, four hundred million here, four hundred million here. Everybody pull their money and put in an equal amount. That's not even touching the very bare minimum of their total overall wealth. Right. And to say, yo, we're going to focus on music, entertainment, and this. We're not going to let nobody else make money off of us. We're going to unionize our situation, and we're going to decide who gets paid this and who gets paid that. Da, 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 da. They could dramatically change the world, but they're not going to do it. No. At all. <laughs> a couple of years ago, Irv Gotti, Suge Knight, and Jay Prince tried to come together and create their own music distribution network. And them motherfuckers who own the music labels had a fit they, <laughs> they lost their fucking minds what do you mean you're going to distribute your own records right. how dare you make how dare you own your own masters right how dare you make money and decide that oh ja rule gets a fair deal and fucking zero from houston get a fair deal and this that and the third right. pd pablo yeah how da- like what do you what do you mean He's you want to? He's the only person I know. Yeah, it's like bro. what do you what do you mean <laughs> that you know everybody's going to get paid accordingly to you know how they should get paid like that the, the 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 mere fact that most people where we come from don't even believe that's possible is mind boggling. They know that. See, here's the thing: Jay Z will do something like he'll say all these things on the track, and because he has influence, then people will jump at it. I keep telling people over and over again: they don't realize in the last five to ten years, the the influence shifted. It used to be sex sell. Now it's just popularity sells. Right. And this, you have to be troubled by that because at the end of the day, you figure if somebody risks exposing a body, you would assume that that would cause some stir up, some attention. But the mere fact that if somebody got twenty and 30,000 followers, they can tell you to do anything. I remember one of the one of the TRPE Jones that I seen. I, I remember, matter of fact, we were talking about in the DM. Yeah, I saw him kill man. <laughs> he was talking about four hundred one k and stuff on the show. I'm I'm sorry, I, I nodded off a little bit. What, <laughs> that was like the Draymond Scepter <laughs> <laughs> <Scepta> edition. <laughs> Remember, what, see, you wasn't really responding to the messages really back and forth like that, but I was Because I was driving. Oh, my bad. You don't text and drive? No. <laughs> you don't text no. Like, What's that little box up there? I thought that reads text to you. That, that's when they text you. Oh, okay. I can answer that shit. Oh, okay. And drive. It's weird. Like, we're not allowed to have our phones. Okay. Like, we can't have our phone on our person. And they're, like, adamant about this shit. Okay. Like, I got a... I actually got, like, a fucking three-day suspension when I popped my wrist last uh-huh. year. 
I used my cell phone to call them to tell them, yo, send me an ambulance. And they gave me a three-day suspension <laughs> for using the phone on the bus. <laughs> this shit was crazy. We're going to get your wrist taken care of. But <laughs> why the fuck you on that phone? Why you on that phone, nigga? This shit is crazy. No, but, 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 the, but the point that I'm trying to say is that when you have a certain type of influence, it has to be... You have to be a person who has a mission and a vision. Like, you know what I mean? You want you have to have some type of ethical, you know, course. Carl with you. Carl says it all the time. Like he he has the right train of thought. Mm-hmm. But Carl's like, I just don't have the money. So right. they're just not gonna listen to me. Right. And it's like looking at Jay Z now, it's like I've just come to the realization the last couple of days, I'm just not a Jay Z stand and some people are. It's like you just gotta let them do what they do. I think the album's great. I think it's his best album since Black Album. Mm-hmm. But the things that he's saying like I was talking to Youngboy today And I'm like He's like yeah you hear that new hove And I'm like yeah I heard it He was like man Jay, Jay talking at that grown man I'm like I mean this is stuff we knew already though He's like yeah but, but my nigga Jay said it. You know what I'm saying I'm, I'm like I feel you I feel you But yeah. Jay, Jay was talking grown man since the button ups though I thought right Or even before that Not really He was I, talking it for his own personal I'm gonna tell you, benefit I'm gonna tell you my thing with, and I, Again I think What does 444 what is the significance? It's something to the know? effect that both of their birthdays is on the fourth, and he got and they got married on the fourth. But okay. if you but if you hear the stream, all he basically said was he woke up four forty four in the morning and he that, he wrote the song four forty four on the stream. <laughs> like you, you didn't hear him say no, that. No. If, if you see, I didn't have title right, and I didn't have what's, what sprint right. <laughs> but I'm a technology guy, right? I'm a find. You will find a way. <laughs> DJ Self had the stream on there. On yeah, the, her Self had the stream. And on the stream is Jay Z talking live about each song when it comes on. Oh, and even Karen okay. Civil and all them, they 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 tweeted. And the I saw the thing. And, and when four forty four come on, he talked about he woke up, and the boy was like, "Yeah, he never wrote nothing." I'm like, "He said he wrote the song, right? Does, was that does that mean he didn't use a pen? But he said he woke up four forty four in the morning, and that song came to him four forty four, and it was so significant he named the album four forty four. Oh, okay. I think I, I think because we 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 understand that there's so much hidden messages in a lot of this stuff, we think we overthink a lot of things. I'm an analyst. I yeah. used to get paid a lot of money to be an analyst. Sometimes it's hard for me to have a conversation because it's, nothing is face value to me. Yeah. Right. But all in all, like I said, we to go back to the original thing we was talking about is the influence. The issue is you got Kobe. You got let's say who else is from Philly that made it? That was Will Smith. Will Smith. Eve. You don't see them here. No. And this is the problem. They become wealthy and they be around other wealthy people and they learn about wealthy things, but they don't disseminate the information back to us. Right. The rich get richer, be, not I mean, because of more money. It's like, All right, well, what about the people that's in the inner city that's grinding every day to bring this information to them and you can't even pack a workshop for free? I can't even give the, you can't literally can't give the information away. You cannot give the information away. The best way, I, in my mind, the best way, I seen it be done is because I believe that uh, popularity sells is that reach out to people who I feel as though it's popular because at the end of the day, we can reach a bigger mass of people that way. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You know, uh, you post y'all, y'all posted that I was going to be on the show and send a question, all that. My DM and stuff was going crazy. <laughs> That's, That's how crazy. popularity works. <laughs> That's your crazy. DM? Cause I didn't get any guys. <laughs> yeah. People was, People was asking me questions or I was getting followers left and yeah. right because that's how popularity works. You know what I mean? If, if they look at y'all, y'all podcast, the way we all look at it is a popular podcast. You know, you can say that you got all the accolades of the half, a, you know, how, how many downloads? Like approximately half a million. Half a, half a, half a million, million downloads yeah. and you had 26 shows and all these other things. To me, I feel like that's accomplishments, right? So to come on this show, people won't take that lightly. Right. What's crazy is that was, we were talking about that. We was going to kind of like, intro the show with that. <laughs> we, we, we were talking about how... For us, it's it's like we both look at it like we don't entertain foolishness. Mm-hmm. Like the whole shit. Remember a couple of weeks ago with the Miami shit. Like, yeah, yeah. like yo, y'all gonna have her on? And we like absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Nah. Like it, it's more so of a privilege right. to come on here. Right. And I, I and wanna, I believe I feel privileged. I, w- I want to say this real quick. Uh, we were gonna have a woman mm-hmm. on the show again today. Mm-hmm. We're like, uh, what are we now? Like two for nine. Yeah, we like two for nine. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to <laughs> that, women, ladies, we were gonna have a woman on the show. She canceled about. Three four hours ago, I'm like, I don't know what the problem be with us and having a woman, you know. And I, I but felt I mean, good about not today. not just women. Women are have have been the worst offenders as far we as have had a canceling. Few. We've had a few male guests cancel and go MIA mm-hmm. and stuff like that on this too. But my biggest point is just like. This is not no Rudy Pooh production. This mm. is not no bullshit. I'm not in my right. basement. I'm not recording this on my iPhone. Right. Um, <laughs> I take this very very serious. 
So that's the first thing. The second thing is it's a lot of time and effort and prep that goes into this. So if I contact you a week ahead of time for a show or sometimes two, three weeks ahead of time about being on the show, it's because I respect and admire your perspective or whatever it is that you do or whatever for whatever purpose that we wanted to have you on the show. Mm -hmm. So to go missing or to cancel three, four hours ahead of time is right. like, it's just blatantly like disrespectful because if – uh, Tavis Smiley or Roland Martin or, or or the Breakfast Club called you. You ain't canceling on them. You gonna point. make a way to 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 work around whatever your personal life situation is right. and make sure you get your ass there. Like like right. this is the way I work, I, and I, this is why I fuck with Chad in the way I do. It's like I'm a verbal agreement guy. We don't have to write out shit. But right. if I if you call me, yo Matt, uh, next week you wanna go to to Borgata play this tournament, and I say, yeah, I don't got nothing next week. Cool, we there. You don't have to call me again. Right. When that day comes, I'm driving to your crib. We, we leaving at 11. I'm, I'm on my way to your crib at 10 right. o'clock. You don't have to call me. Everyone about me, everyone knows that about me. Right. I'm real, real, what's the word? Punctual. Mm -hmm. what, oh, man. <laughs> like, when I, when I use good words, boy, this is crazy. I'm real punctual when it comes to, like, time and like, my job. My, me being in transportation has made me like that. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to call me on to see where I'm at. I'm on when do we ever hit each other? Yo, you on your way to the studio? Never, and never. Right. We, it's I, no need to. It's no. We Chad hit me. We we figure out because we 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 change our times every now and then just because of schedule. What time we record and what day? Boom. It's nothing to think about. Right. We'll be there. And I'm like that with everything for whatever. Your sh baby shower. Your, if I'm if I say I'm coming, I'll be there. Right. You don't got to worry about baby it. shower. It's the <laughs> truth. But you know, it, it, some people just aren't like that. It's like things. I understand things come up. I understand life. I understand it's the way it's it like. Works. Damn, this Cinnabon is like really good but right now. Like, I ain't my, really my trying thing to get is up. Like, like <laughs> life altering, like a car crash. Jesus is back. Something. I get it. I get it. I get it. But here's the thing. But uh, just as much as here's what people don't understand the 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 whole point of this show is that regardless of if anybody's sitting in this chair. We still do numbers regardless. Mm -hmm. Some shows are bigger than others for various reasons. Like our Dope Shows show is bigger than others because they personally took pride in it and promoted the shit right. out of the show right. and sent it to all their people that right. don't normally listen to the podcast. Shout out to Migos uh, for president. It's got to be above 250. Yeah, so then we have uh -huh. another show. Uh, we did a show for called president. Migos for President. Oh, That's okay. like our yeah. third show. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's got like over yeah. 250,000 downloads. Congrats. I don't understand how, but <laughs> it's like a cult follow. It's like done blown up. So the water. so basically what I say all that to say it's like, yo, when you, we invite, invite somebody to be on the show, it helps us because it helps us to break out of the monotony of just talking about the same shit. Mm -hmm. But it also helps the person who's being on the show because Absolutely. this is a real media platform Absolutely. that we have built from the ground up, along with the help of New Media Studios. We've built this media platform to where people in South Africa, the UK, Mexico, the Netherlands, Egypt, like people all around the world listen to this show. Absolutely. How they get it, I don't know, but they're getting this shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So just imagine, like, from an advertising standpoint, if somebody paid for an ad on Migos for President, at that point, we might have been charging $40, $60 for ads. Right. That ad lives forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So if somebody bought an ad on that show that now has 250,000 downloads, how much residual business do you get from that? Tons. If somebody comes on this show and, and say we're talking about sneakers or whatever the case may be, and they some sneaker expert and they got a website and they get 300,000 downloads, that means that 300,000 people potentially are going to go to traffic their website yep. and potentially buy something yep. or or share it to somebody else who's going to come and buy something or consign something or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. This is a real media platform, and I just want people to take out the fact that y'all know us, remove that from it, right. and start taking the shit a little more serious, man, because it's like, yo, as much as we trying to help ourselves, we trying to help y'all maybe a little bit more. It might be 5149 us trying to help you. Right. You know what I'm saying? I said this to Just before you guys got here. We were uh, talking about last week. And um, we were talking about the uh, the iTunes reviews, and we're at like a hundred and thirty nine reviews. And I was telling Justin, like, it's just hard to get people. Like you say, mm -hmm. I'm doing these free workshops. It's hard to get people to come out for them, right. even though you know you need this. I'm like, it's just hard to get people to move on certain situations. Because yeah, right. last week we we did the whole, the whole drum where we uh we posted okay. R.I.P. to the podcast. Right, was, podcast I, I over. That, yeah. Chad has 75 comments, people crying and screaming. I had about 65. It was all on Facebook, Snapchat, I seen it. I, Twitter. It was everywhere. I was on your page. I seen it because we just had talk. I'm like, right. I was <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> what happened? Maybe that didn't sell too late. And, and it's like, what on earth is it that 
you know, we can't get the reviews on iTunes. Like, like people listen to the show. But then, and I, I told Chad, it's like I had to get myself out of that because mm-hmm. I'm an avid listener to Brilliant Idiots. Mm-hmm. I, I'm subscribed to the podcast. I download. I'm subscribed to Drink Champs. But I don't uh, follow Drink Champs on YouTube. And I'm like, I, I, I'm logged into my YouTube but just won't hit the subscribe button knowing yeah. that that helps them out. So now I make sure I do that. I make yeah, sure I'm gonna, I leave right. a comment. Yeah, I make sure I, I leave I, a review. Any any media channel that I come across, whether it's YouTube or whatever, or iTunes, whatever like that, I make sure that I subscribe. Right. Um, like I leave comments arguing with people on TYT Sports all the time <laughs> just because like I like the channel and it's like I like their perspective. And the whole reason why we started the show is I told Matt, I'm like, yo, we have great conversations amongst ourselves. We have a do- everybody has a different perspective. Let's sell our perspective right. to people. So I respect people's perspective when I see them doing different things in the media. So I try to support them as best as I can because it's not costing me nothing right. to do the shit. So it's like, why not subscribe? Why not fucking hit the bell and get notifications? Why not leave a comment here or there? Why not like every video? Or, or, you know but, what I'm saying when I'm watching it. But when you when you think about all these things, like I remember, like when I first walked in, Matt, like your aura is like really just changed, right? It, it definitely has. It, so, so he's saying that, right? But I do carry myself professionally because I would never take it lightly that I'm coming to somebody that I know show right it's Sunday afternoon I didn't go to the office today but I'm still going to have on a suit and tie because this is what I wear every day right. I'm conducting business right here yeah you know what I'm saying this is a tax deductible trip for my gas when y'all take those pictures and I put it in my file so in case I get audited this is business right you know anything that I I had to purchase gas whatever case may be this is tech. but what I say all that to say this first and foremost now you say two for nine for for women the ironic thing about that whole thing is ninety five percent of the people in my book of business is all women right and this is the mind boggling thing it seemed like in this city only women want to buy houses only women yeah, want I to mean, start that's, businesses that's, that's in this culture that's only this, women like, women women be holding it down sometimes I be like where's the brothers at you feel what I'm saying it's like I know that. Sh- I mean, I in love the house listening to I just, met up, so it's, I, just it's, I just met up with my real quick. I just met up with my ex today, real good friend of mine or whatever. Me, I used to date. I'm 34, so probably we probably broke up like 11 years ago, whatever. Mm-hmm. Always maintained a friendship. She's literally telling me about like how her, her her daughter's her oldest daughter's father just asked her for part of her income tax money, and they ain't been together for five years. And I'm like, yo, it's fucked up that. You, as hard working as you are, you work for a government agency and all that, as hard as working as you are, that you even got to be susceptible to a bullshit-ass conversation like that Mm -hmm. because you're doing all the right things. And you need to, even if you're not with that man, to have somebody that's reciprocating the same energy and working towards something to be able to come to the table to make sure that you're not raising your daughter as a single parent. Right. Like, And it's like, yo, far too many times that's the case where it's like the woman working hard as shit, busting her ass, and whether it's a man, she deal with her man she used to deal with is doing literally nothing, nothing with his life because the world is changing and them same niggas that was making 10 12 15 thousand dollars a month selling coke a couple years ago that shit ain't like it was no more At so all. now they can't adjust and now life is hitting them like a ton of bricks right and it's like yo what do i do because when y'all niggas was making all this money y'all was hustling without a purpose right and y'all didn't have no next step to y'all life so now once it slows down you don't know what to do, and you just like, damn, I'm just fucked up out here. I'm trying to like, outside, yeah. Real yeah. Shit. And a, a lot of time when I sit down with people, like say for instance, I, I sit down with, with a woman, right? And I'm like, you married, or you know what I mean? Do you have a boyfriend, significant other, somebody that you depend on, somebody depend on you? Typically, it's easier for me to do financial planning when the money is intertwined. Yeah, so I want to sit down yeah. with them. You know what the main response they give me? They're not gonna want to sit down. It's like you just count them out because we as men, black men specifically, we just don't see the importance of anything. We will really ride any type of wave that we can, <laughs> even if it comes to, well, you just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad, man. It, it's really sad. And I, I, I feel like for me, when I see all the people that I help, it's just to be women. I'm like, the men is the one who run the household that's responsible well, for supposed to. Supposed to. Typically, but we live in a new world, modern day age. <laughs> we live in a, the a day, whole new world. I try to tell women, listen, that's a, a, a blessing that you're able to take care of yourself. Don't ever sit there and say to yourself that I'm equal to a man in the sense that you're comfortable enough to take care of yourself. No, that's fine. Let's use your money for vacation. Let's right. use your money for the finer things in life. But don't give no man the easy way out, and that's what it is. It's that mix between feminism and all the independence that come with it right. that allow these dudes to escape because they use it against the women. So then now I'm sitting down, I've, I got all these women that's coming to my office that's looking to get help. But I'm like, the man is responsible for the shelter. 
The man is responsible for the clothing and he's responsible for the food and the protection. Right. But if he's not the one coming into the office and she is, then obviously she wearing the pants. Yeah. And you see that too, more often than none. Yeah. yeah, I was driving a 54 the other day. The nigga, I, he, he see, I see him every day. He got on and was like, damn. See you every day. You don't think you work too much? Uh-huh. I'm like, I think you smoke crack too much. <laughs> like, I see you every day going down to 5th and Lehigh. Then I see you coming back, going back to 26th and Lehigh. And it's just it, it's just amazing. I was, I was saying the other day, it, driving d- through the ur- like these urban blocks, like Lehigh, Dolphin, Allegheny, it just be niggas just outside. All day, every I'm day. I'm talking about in front of the beer joint. It, it just... Uh, C Town on twenty fifth and Lehigh. They just be out there. And it be okay. young niggas now. Yeah. Young niggas, like 22, 23. Why are you hanging at the beer distro young all Young niggas, day? alcoholics, early. early. That and shit crazy, dog. Young. I'm talking about thirty year old niggas just outside. It's sad. Nigga got on the bus the other day. <laughs> This nigga had so much white deodorant up under his... <laughs> and I was like, damn, you not going in the house. Because he, he had put his arm up. And I was like, yo, this nigga's not going in the house for hours. <laughs> like, he's just out. Like, when you put on that much deodorant... You never know where I'm going to end up at, cuz. Yeah, you're going to be out here for a long the, time. The shelter don't let us back in until 7.30. <laughs> been out here since 6. And it was crazy. It, it's, 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 it's been a shift, man. And, and we have to... We have, as, as black men... If we want to be respected as such, we have to fit in that role. We got to grow up and level up and, and start being men again and stop putting so much pressure on these women to to baby us and to take care of right. us. Like, it's, it's ugly. It's like we, we just had graduation season. And when you get to the college level of graduation, the vast majority of what you see is young black women. All right. Dog. It's, I it's posted not, it's, it on my it's 90%. The day, the, that Saturday when all the graduations was happening downtown, literally my whole timeline Black women graduating. And I'm like, I don't argue with three niggas for coming on the back door of the bus. Right. Dead. Like, dead. That's, that's just the reality right. of it. Like, it's men who just aren't doing anything. anything. And, you know, uh, women as a whole was the uh, it's the fastest growing demographic. But black women, women I think, uh, graduates of law school, becoming doctors yeah, and lawyers. Yeah, my sister just graduated from law school. She just got her bar. Uh, she, just, she passed the bar in February. Oh, she, just got, she just got admitted to the New York Bar Association on Wednesday. Nice. And, and, and black women is pulling the weight. I mean, I hate the word coddled and all that stuff. I hate every time I see a woman tweet it, but it's true. It's absolute truth. And I hate it's that ugly it's true. <laughs> because I know that there's a lot of men out here that's doing it. Like, um, you know, uh, my cousin, she was like, I, you know, men have commitment problems. I'm like, what bubble do you live in? Because a lot of men that I know are married and looking to get married. And even if they're not married, I know people that have been in boyfriend girlfriend relationships that have been committed for seven plus years. And right. I'm like, you can't live in a bubble and start grouping everybody. But it's so much easier than that when every time you come across somebody, they're going to prove or affirm what you believe about a certain type right. of demographic. Right. So you have no choice but to believe that, right? But as men, we should take ownership to that and be a ca- – it's going to take more than somebody like Jay-Z. And I'm not saying somebody like Jay-Z to downplay who he is because I believe that what he's been able to do in this life – And that's what like, I was talking about, the whole being a stand. Like, I literally saw niggas tweeting like, uh-oh, Big Hove said it, the culture about the shift. I'm like, <laughs> no. I lo- I'm like, no. Listen, I consider uh-oh. myself a stand. I love him, but I'm realistic in life. Right, exactly. It's going to take more. That. It's going to take generations. We might not ever see even a, sh- a little shift and change Didn't in I say our life. It's not going to change our life. Because at the end of the day, I know Future got an album coming out any day now. That's what he is. just put out two videos. Future got an album coming out any day now. And it's if going, that shit hot, we're going to be right back to being crazy, misogynistic. What's crazy is, the, what's crazy is the, bull, <laughs> the bull who tweeted that, like, big homie said it. So the culture about the shift. Uh, the tweet I saw that everybody was retweeting was like, relax, Future's coming. We're not going to care about this shit <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's the truth, though. But if it, but if you if you think about it, it's all about accountability first and foremost. You have to take ownership of who you are and who you're supposed to be in the role of house and the role of your family, society, and so on and so right. forth. And once that happens, it will be better communications between somebody like me as a financial professional right. and being able to go into the neighborhoods and the community to be able to make an uh, impact how I want to mm-hmm. because they have to be ready for that conversation. Oh, it's 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 just. It, it, I don't think it's ever gonna stop. Like, it was a video I saw the other day on Instagram too. The boy was like, he was talking to his man. He was like, "Yo, man, like I just listened to Jay that four four four. Like, it's I'm ready to get my life together. Like, I'm gonna get this credit together. I'm stop going to strip club. I'm stop <laughs> fucking around on my girl. Like, 
that that shit just changed my whole life. And then the poor rotten Pez, you heard if Young Metro don't trust you, and he's all set. <laughs> Woo! When he started doing this, the nigga started dancing to the Bad and Bougie. And it's like, that shit real. It's like, you can say all that, but they cut on Bad and Bougie. You're going to lose it just like everybody else. You're going to be doing the Uzi shimmy with the rest of us <laughs> <laughs> playing games. Fuck this shit for me over there. But yeah, it's like, we, we find ourselves in, in, in situations where it's like, these men or so-called men want to be the man and be the head of the household, but you asking your girl to leave her debit card every day so you can order a pizza from Papa John. That's why like, you got to get a joint account like me and my girl. That way you ain't got to leave. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we're not talking about from the perspective where somebody was doing good and they committed to doing good and then they fall on hard times. Right. You want somebody to be able to, to, to hold you down. My wife has been holding me down on many difficult times. If you're in a business and all your income is based off your business, it can get difficult. Bless me. Shit get dark from time to time. It can get dark, right? And you have to embrace those things. But like they said, you know what I mean? You have to be strong and resilient in what you believe in. Because if you don't really, is, are you really not passionate about the things that you're doing, then it's not going to be successful. Y'all didn't get the 26 shows because this is something that y'all can do. It has to be some some type of love in what you do right. to make you be able to be around as long as you can. Because yeah, I mean, from January 8th when we started to now, a lot of shows then came and went. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that was on this network and on other networks. You know what I'm saying, and, and it's like, yo, the fact of us our planning, our our personal relationship, and how we you know bounce off each other, the way that we communicate, and the fact that we come with try to be as creative as possible mm-hmm. and put that energy into the show is what separates us from a lot of other shows. Yeah, I was saying it to my uh, homie the other day at work, and he was like, uh, shout out my man Bradford, I stand alone. He uh, he was like, yo, it's like y'all's show is, is so dope, it's so complex, like just the different perspectives, mm-hmm. the different ways y'all go about discussing. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I've literally had, y'all have shows where y'all will discuss the same issue, but from a different standpoint. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the way we are when right. we discuss things. And I was telling him, we do a lot of, Back and forth, go you know, texting and all of that type stuff, talking it out, you know. And I don't think people realize that right. when they listen to the show. I think they just basically like, Chad's, you know, in the club. I'm on a bus. I park. <laughs> he leaves the club. <laughs> yeah. We just, just show up. up. Right. It, but, it, like, no, it's a lot to go into the behind right. the scenes. And it's like, even this show, like, I kept putting it off. Like, Chad wanted to do this. I, like he said, I think you said earlier, like episode 10, like yeah, right, right after Carl, I think Carl was right, episode right, 10. Right. He's like, y'all want to do a financial literacy show. And I'm like, man, fuck that, man. Remy just dropped the disc. <laughs> you know, and they're like, and he's like, no, man, let's get away from the stupid shit. Right. And it's like, because I, I just couldn't, you know, see it. But it's like, once we started really working it out, working the kinks of it, it's like, all right, yeah, no, this would be actual dope. And it will be dope for everybody to listen to it. It would just be a good look. Right. So, you know, boom. And, it's, and like, it, and it's a good way to introduce the conversation yeah, to another People need platform. the information. Right. Because well, every time... Uh, a new p- podcast about to drop. It always reminds me to go back to what made us Philly Twitter. You know, people, Chad worked the 9 to 5. And Chad, he'll tell you, uh, one thing about me, I never had a problem with giving people props and all those other never. things. And you know the conversations we had. I'm like, yo. Me and his older brother have a relationship because of him. Because right. he used to talk to his brother about me and my influence and how smart he felt I was and all that. Right. And me and his brother forged a relationship off of that. Right. Because I didn't, your brother older than me, so I didn't I didn't know him or right. know nothing about him. And you was the driving force that put me, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. put me with him. And I remember, I just remember when 5 o'clock would come, you're like, all right, Chad, what's going on? Waiting for that trending topic. Right. See, people don't know how Twitter used to be because they haven't been there long enough. This right. is like 10, like 2010, mm-hmm. 2011. This is six, seven years ago. That's a long time. Yeah. But then when I see that a, a new episode about to drop, I'm like, it's this, it reminds me of the same right, thing. Right, right. And I just see people like, yo, it's coming. And then the same thing. It's like, that got me do work or that got me do some tough times. Or so, that, I always see what people say. And I'm like, look, at the end of the day, we need to support. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, like, Push the subscribe button. Whatever you can do, retweet and all those other things. It's, for for uh, chick got on the bus the other day. I was driving a nine downtown. She mm-hmm. got on. She was like, "Matt makes me sick." And I'm like, "She's just Matt." You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> like, she's, she's just Matt. Chill, sis. And uh, you know, she was like, "Yeah, I, I really love your show." She's like, "My girlfriend. She works at uh, what's the hospital right there on Chestnut, Eighth and Chest, Tenth and Chestnut, uh, Jefferson, Tenth and Walnut. Yeah, Jefferson." Um, she's like, yeah, my girlfriend works with me in my unit, and she had like subscribed me to it. She's like, I started listening to it, and uh, she's like, I listen to y'all every week. Like, right. I, I love your show. You know, like y'all, y'all are just so funny and so back and forth. And she's doing all this, and then she like just walked off, and I'm like, 
She definitely just slid past on that 225. I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say shit. But she listened to the podcast. But sis, I peeped your game. You know what I'm saying? But no, that like people really guy, walk up. To, I'm telling you, I'm keeping it real. People really walk up to me. I tell them chicks screaming out the window, man, make me sick. I'm like, yo, like, this shit is crazy. Like People really, really enjoy listening to it. So it, it's, like, it, it's dope it, that we can do it. And that's how you know that the influence has to be positive in terms of People use their power for the wrong stuff sometimes, Absolutely. right? And that can destroy a lot of people. No, listen, we can. We, when, I, when, my, when, when Baby JK first was born, it was like a phenomenon, right? <laughs> I would see people out and they'd be like, oh my God, I see your son grow up on Instagram. <laughs> or, oh, you the guy from Twitter and all these other things. Like, it, that really means a lot to people that they can relate to people and they can say, okay, this person helped me with my day. It's been time people DM me and say, listen, I thought about something you said before and it just laughed and I just changed my day. It's people ask me about. All of y'all and a bunch of other people all the time. Like, right. yo, you really know Matt? You really know? Like, they ask that stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I seen the picture. Or I seen y'all talking on Instagram or Twitter. Like, you really know him? I'm like, yeah. yeah like, you know what I'm saying? Like I seen that. you walking to the Dunkin' Donuts the other day when I go to the Magic. <laughs> <Hell>, yeah. <laughs> like, you know? Hit Kendall Slotto <laughs> for me at the worst stops. <laughs> We had like a two minute like just go in and just pull off. Like, bro, <laughs> Kendall said, whenever I'm downtown walking into a Dunkin' Donuts, it don't matter what Dunkin' Donuts it is, I hear a horn beep. It's Kendall. I'm like, yo, Kendall might as well be my personal trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Catch me whenever I'm going into a Dunkin' Donuts. This shit is crazy. Oh man, that's real. Yeah, definitely a, like good three or four times. Yeah, downtown. That's funny. Oh man. So real quick, let's talk about some credit basics and important stuff that people need to know. Like. From a credit standpoint. Okay. So in terms of credit, they have to understand, first, what's your purpose of having credit? Because I had this argument. I want to say argument back and forth with my cousin. She posted this this thing on Instagram and said, would you rather have $70,000 or 850 credit score? I'd rather have 850 credit score because I can go get $70,000, maybe more, Okay. from a lender institution. How about you? I'm an ignorant nigga. <laughs> I, I, give me 70 bands. All right, so I'm going to tell you, I said 70K. This is the reason being is because just because you have an 850 credit score, nothing is automatic. You can't just go and say, I got an 850 and I can get a million dollars because credit is based off of the risk of being able to pay back. Yeah. I know plenty of people who have A1 credit and can't get a loan on anything because they don't have income. Well, I'm assuming that I have some sort of income. It needs to be said. <laughs> yeah, so see, Chad, Chad's thinking I got 850 credit score and I am who I am. Right. Yeah. See, I'm thinking I am who I Like 70 grand, I'm going to a 1020 game. Right. I, like, <laughs> I already know that. I'm going to be in the back of parts. <laughs> I already know that. You but, can be 70. I'll be at a 2020. But, but when you think about credit, you have to first understand why you need it. Because yeah. a lot of times you don't need it. My purpose of saying 70K is because in dealing with finance, I understand compound interest, right? So the rule of 72 is very crucial. And if you don't know what the rule of 72 is, it's basically is an old banking rule from years ago. I think the Jewish might have even had even uh, invented it. And basically what it is, you take the number 72 and you divide it by your ROI, which is return on your investment. And whatever number you get, it tells you how long it takes in years for that money to double. Now, if you have a savings account, you're getting 1% up to, let's say you have some type of investment, you get up to 10%. Now that money is working for you. Right. But the average credit card is about 24 in the APR. So it's working against you. Working against you. Yeah. When your money is growing every, it's double, your debt is gr doubling every three years. Yeah. Right. So in order to establish good credit, because me, I'm not necessarily a, 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 a credit professional, but based off of the financial aspect in terms of like, say, for instance, somebody want to get a house or so on and so forth. Building credit is substantial only if you don't need capital. Capital versus credit It's not capital and credit. A lot of people say, well, and this is another thing I tell people. They say, well, this such and such a group of people do it. And this such a group, 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 uh, people, uh, group of people, people, group of people do it. But what is the basis to their scenario? Right. There's a lot of people who refinance houses, flip another one, then pay this one off. And there's a lot of people who try to do that same thing, and now they owe for four uh, mortgages, and yeah. they're getting foreclosed on all of them. Because they don't have no strategy. Because they don't have no strategy. Or they don't have the team around right. everything. Yeah. You go refinance for a shell that you just bought, and you don't got your own personal contractor. Me and Chad talk a lot about his house situation. Chad, like, it's crazy. I was telling my girl, I feel like I learned because of me and him talking because Chad literally would call me like right. every other day like right. all right let me tell you the, and and it's crazy but he was saying it he learned so much exactly going through the process that he just didn't know yeah. and it's like that's kind of how it goes it's like you know a lot of people don't can't stand it but right. that's like when you go to where you're refinancing one house 
Go get another house. It's like, yo, slow up, because you might yeah. not know what the hell you're right. doing. Yeah. And then you look crazy. Now you owe three and, mortgages. And the number one rule of business is location, location, location anyway. So a lot of people will just jump out there and be like, oh, I can get a $10,000 house, in, but it's in North Philly. Right. Nobody that's buying a house, the average person that's going to get approved to buy a house, even on a first-time home buyer, mm-hmm. if they make forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, they're going to get approved for up to two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, somewhere between one twenty to two hundred thousand dollars. Right. They don't want to live at Twelfth and Lehigh, right? They want to live in in Winfield or 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 part of South Philly. <laughs> or, you know they don't want to live at Twelfth and Lehigh. Yeah, right. So while you might have did the thing to this fucking house at Twelfth and Lehigh, nobody's not buying this shit. Right. You gonna get somebody to rent this joint all day? Right. Because it's nicer. It's you know what I'm saying it's adjacent to what they already used to. Whatever. But you are gonna be pulling from the renter base of people that already live in that neighborhood, right. but just willing to pay a little bit more. But you're not. You're never gonna sell that house. Right. Well, you, you <laughs> never. Location is key, and with gentrification coming in, it does change a lot of things. And we could talk about that all day. Yeah. But first and foremost, congratulations, because I did see that you you know you, you had an activity on the house, right? Sold it three days. Sold it three days. And we were talking about that yeah. before, right? So congratulations to you on that. But in terms of credit, for one, you have to understand. Credit versus capital, that's first, right? Mm-hmm. Do you really need credit? And if you do, what do you need it for, right. right? In order to be able to establish credit, you have to do certain things like have credit history, right? So one of the things they say is don't have a lot of hard inquiries. But yeah. that's kind of confusing because that's like going to go get a license. You know that process is confusing, right? Mm-hmm. You need a Social Security card or a birth certificate, but in order to get a birth certificate or Social Security you card, need a you license. need a license <laughs> or some type of ID, right? Mm-hmm. So they're telling you in order to get this credit, you have to have like a credit card or some type of history, right? Yeah. But you don't use it for your lifestyle. You're supposed to cut back uh, borrowing yeah. and, and utilize your savings and stuff like that. You have to maintain a good payment history, pay your stuff on time, Absolutely. whatever the case may be. Now, if you're thinking about credit and the purpose of buying a house, when you're buying a house, you need three things, essentially. First and foremost, you need a credit score. The second thing is they look at your debt-to-income ratio. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the third thing, you have to have money to actually down payment and then continuously to pay on the loan. Yeah. And now, with the house buying process, they changed it because of the... Uh, all of the people that defaulted on them loans in right. 2007, 2008. So now they changed the process to where when you go to buy a house, you get pre, you get a pre-approval, pre-approval. and you got a re-approval right. at the end of the process right. because they want to make sure that you got this pre-approval and you didn't go and get a motherfucking uh, a, a Amex and buy a yacht with yeah. it or some crazy shit like that yeah. and fuck up your debt-to-income ratio. So they're going to re-approve you at the end of that process. And that's what hit, hitches up a lot of people because – they go and something negative hit their credit, mm-hmm. or they go and trying to get a credit, get a bunch of credit cards and all these hard inquiries, and it lower their credit score yep. because they're not aware of the credit challenges and how different stuff affects the the, the final number. Right. And a lot of people don't know about the intangible things that affect your credit, like the differences between how frequent you change your address and all these other things. All that, all that stuff takes an effect. Like I said, me myself personally, I want to get people to a point where they can have that third legged thing which is the personal savings it's not just saving five dollars here and there it's being able to save the money and then put into accounts that's growing right and then that safety right so at the end of the day when it, you it's, it's okay to establish credit it's needed but it should yeah. be something that take you up to the next level right. not it shouldn't be the basis you know i do i do a lot of business planning right i have a non-profit it's called move and it stands for making other values on entre- value entrepreneurships not a plug but i'm just you know i'm just saying that when i when i, when I do help people with the aspect cause i don't really don't focus on it right now i try to tell people all the time if you want to go out and get a business loan and you just doing a business plan the moment that happens they own your business that's deflating to me right i want to yeah. have some type of excitement like okay cool i own this business but you have to find ways crowdfund do all these other things a lot of people did it people were ashamed of it. i know a few people who did it actually one person in specific i won't say but just expanded to another building and first started with crowdfunding right but we have all these things about people going to judge us and if you got a business then why you need our help and all these other things but this is why we in the state that we are yeah. because we don't have an understanding of why it's important to have these things to be able to help us but to me credit <coughs> You just need to make sure you know what you need it for. If you understand how it works, yeah. then you'll be successful. And if you don't, you go in and you start swiping, 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 swiping. It's crazy. It's like for, in 14, I, 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 for some odd reason, I just was like, yo, I'm going to get my credit good. And I started worrying about that and getting things, taking off my credit report. And next thing I know, I was over 700. And I'm the worst nigga to give some credit because I, I literally. <laughs> you'll use that shit. Yeah, I, I start applying <laughs> for this. this. And, and like you saying, the debt to income, it's like I walk on the car lot and they see my shirt. 
Oh, yo, yo, come on to meet you. And I'd be like, no, no, my credit. Oh, that shit don't matter. And it's like, you work seven, you good. And it's right. like, but that, it's crazy. If you literally, you got over a 600 and a fairly decent job, they will approve you for any anything. goddamn thing. But yo. you know what's okay. They'll find a way to make it work. Anything. They'll stretch the term. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll do all type of creative stuff. 98-month lease. <laughs> but yeah. It's good, though. Every time he talk, it always brings me back to another point that I want to dig into, right? So the main thing that you brought up is that they look at your shirt and say you accept it. People don't realize when it comes to credit, it's still an underwriting process. Exactly. It's not just an algorithm As that spits out a credit score. They still have the ability to approve you even right. if you don't have what they need because they can underwrite. And that's the key to everything, right? If you come in with the right things, you can always negotiate. Everything is negotiable. Everything in life is negotiable. Is that <laughs> it's a filter process. And my man, <laughs> my homie, man, shout out to funniest nigga on earth. He was going to apply for a, uh, uh, he wanted to get an Escalade and um, whatever. He's like, yeah, my credit was horrible. But, you know, they be fucking with me because I be taking out the little bullshit ass loans. He's like, Gene be in the back. That's the lady who works at the credit union. So I, I, <laughs> he was like, yeah, I'm gonna go down there and see Miss Jean. I'm gonna uh, go apply for this Escalade, and I'm gonna take her some flowers. Hopefully, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so smooth talk is way into this Escalade. I see him four days later in a white Escalade. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> out laughing. Oh man! I'm like, did that flyer bullshit work? He got approved for the fucking loan. I was dying. Like, uh, yeah, that's a, that's the funniest shit ever. Because they're going to go through a checklist, and they're going to say, all right, you make X amount, you got a direct deposit, you got uh, a savings account. You've been account, living here for you, this You've been living here for You've been at this job, yeah, for, been this at the job for this long. But that first thing they asked me, never, how long you been accepted? Nine years. Oh, yeah. yeah fun, it's fundabil Take fundability and findability. Mm -hmm. Because worse kind of worse with a vehicle, we just come back and get that motherfucker. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Same thing with a house. A house is a little bit different because you're talking about government funds a lot of times right. when you're going through FHA or whatever right. like that. So because they dropped the ball so bad the last regime they not trying to repeat that shit they corrupted the world economy yeah. last go around so they not trying to repeat that shit so at least for the next 20 30 years they gonna be a little bit more stringent right, right. but at some point it's gonna go back to where motherfuckers just be buying houses like they buying uh, Gucci t-shirts again yeah. it's coming soon <laughs> <laughs> it's coming soon because if you look at the Fed rates they shifted on um, mortgages and you have to again People don't pay attention to the right things. Yeah. I, you know, I, I was blessed because I got hired in 2000, 2009 by J.P. Morgan and within that whole crisis. And I think people don't understand what actually happened and why the economy was down. Do you know that back just a couple of years ago when we was going through what we was going through again, the, the market dropped lower than it did when in, in 2008 when it crashed right. and it was a little bit more resilient this time so it didn't really go that but we right. was doing bad yeah, and then after we got out of that it crashed lower than that right. <laughs> so i follow those things because i'm in that that industry so you know even if i'm not looking for certain things because of where i'm at I'm, it's going to fall in my lap but people don't pay attention to those things because it's like all right I'm not gonna check my bank account because if I do, then the then uh, then somehow, some way, my money just not gonna be there. But if I just don't look at it, I can swipe all day. Right? Like you gotta look at it. I look at my shit every day. I look at my I, credit every it's, week. It's depressing. Listen, but some I people look really at be on the memes and all that. They say, "Oh man, I'm, I'm glad that John swipe." Yeah. Every time I go out to dinner or something like that, and I swipe my debit card, I always make that joke. When the people come back, it's like, "Oh, that joke really worked." <laughs> I mean, I know it's going to work, but it's people who really not going to edge every day. When my credit got really good, mm -hmm. and I, I approve for shit, and this and that. I still, you got that. As black people, we got that I, healthy it, fear, yeah, like, oh, this joint might not work. This joint might not go <laughs> Figure through. out a plan B. <laughs> then you're going to log on. Your number going to go from 750 to 7. <laughs> like, no, they just, they just playing with me. I'm, when I got my truck, like, I was at the dealership, and dude was like, you know, yeah, I'm going to go in the back, you know, whatever, whatever. He came out was like, all right, yeah, you're approved. I'm like, no shit. When, when, <laughs> you, when you say truck, you don't, you don't mean Mountaineer. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> the truck. Oh, the truck. That's old Twitter, folks. <laughs> they probably won't catch that uh, one. Shit. But, yeah, I mean, all in all, credit, like I said, it's it's relevant. No different than anything. Yeah. It's, it's important if you need it, but just make sure you understand why you need it. And then, again, like anything in life, you have to – everything that needs to be in proportion. You you can't go crazy with the stuff. But that's what I was. That was my point when I first started talking. Was like you're definitely right because it's like we do things but don't really have a like I save money right now and I, I got a, I got actually three savings accounts. Nice. But I, I take money out my check every week and it's like I'd save but I don't really know why I like I have things that I'm looking to do like right. I got a couple, I got three things really that I'm worried about but it's like you know I, I went to my credit union for my. 
transit workers, mm-hmm. like the the bus jump, is across the street from Philly's Famous, and it's like. I'll go there and take out money and really don't need money, but just on some shit. Right, right. Like, I take out X amount of dollars every week, which is a nice amount, and it's like, all right, my girl, like, yeah, let's go to Philly Family's with water ice. And I'm like, all right, well, I ain't got no cash. Let me run a credit union real quick. Right. Come to the credit union, I'm like, 400. Yeah, give me $600. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I know, I got all this cash. I'm about doing stupid shit just because she wanted to get some water ice. Right. And it's like, I save money and, like you said, worried about credit, but I really didn't have, like, a goal or a right. reason in doing it. And, so. and, I, and I think the first part is that if you save, you, you know, most people can't save. The average but, American does not ever have the ability to save because. Right. The average income, you know, is $32,500. It's people who never make gross more than $20,000 in a whole lifetime. That's crazy. So to be able to save, first and foremost, that's commendable because it's something that most people just can't do for one reason or another. Right. The next thing, once you're saving, you have to have that money working for you. I don't care if you sit on the bus all day and just driving is not difficult. Dealing with passengers is a little bit difficult. You work hard because you have to work, period. Mm-hmm. I always consider any job hard work in the sense that right. is you have to give up your time to make money. But if you don't have that money in account that's growing interest on it, especially with a, a, a protection on the downside, then you losing money by saving as well. A girl said this the other day. I said, if you don't use it, you lose it. She's like, well, what about money? I said, yeah, if you just have your money in just a regular bank account, if you don't use it, you lose it. She's like, how is that possible? Inflation. Inflation. Inflation is growing 3.5%. Yeah. It's just hard. To, it's very I don't like. It's very hard to not spend. I don't know if that's right. I don't know if that's wrong. It's just hard. I, I know that if you keep saying it's hard to not spend, it won't be easy. <laughs> <laughs> But look at it. Look at it like this: If a person, if you was making forty thousand dollars a year in two thousand fourteen, then you was making forty thousand dollars a year in two thousand fifteen, sixteen, and now seventeen, you still making the same amount of money. You're losing money because everything around you is going up and costing you more. Yep. But you're still making the same amount, amount of money, money and expected to be able to survive on the same salary when they just increased the cost of your health care. Your flexible fin- spending plan went up, and these are just job related right. things. Not even you know outside those your co and then your co-pays go up when you go to the doctor, but you still supposed to survive off the same amount of money. Right. And I have a friend that's going through that right now, and I'm like, yo, you have to get, you have to quit this job. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to. Like, you don't have a fucking choice. You got to just quit and figure it the fuck out because staying in this job, you're losing yourself and you're losing right. money staying in this job. You just got to quit this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And you, you have to. And so the best way I go and I help my clients is I call it a financial GPS, right? So it's six buckets. Um, you have cash flow. You have debt management, you have proper protection, then you have emergency fund, you have asset accumulation, and then you have uh, res- uh, 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 re- uh, preserving the wealth, uh, estate planning, right? Now, an asset accumulation, this is where we teach people how to outfl- outpace inflation, right? Because it's, it's, it's key. If you work hard, it's people that lift hundreds of pounds. Of st- I don't know what it is that they do. People in the nursing field and all these other yeah. fields, they work in 16-hour shifts and... Part and part, a lot of times, because they have access to overtime, their lifestyle is based off of the overtime income, right. which is the scariest thing ever. Because as soon as the overtime go away, then back to reality. It's back to reality. So now, Nigga. Yeah, you see <laughs> You know, I, I know. Especially in SEPTA, I know they get a lot of overtime, right? And it happens, and that's the most scary. To see yo, when the, when the, it only happened one time since I've been there where there was no overtime. It's the scariest thing. I'm Yo, niggas was... Getting fucking vending machines. Fucking, <laughs> um, niggas was doing anything they could. Like, it was crazy, but it's like, yeah, because people get used to, like, because the runs, like, I tell people all the time, we don't work eight-hour shifts. Right. Like, my run right now, uh, I got a 13 on the weekend, and then I got 11 during the day. Okay. So, my, my run is pretty big. So, it's like, it's people, like, one, one of my dudes in my job got a 74-hour run for the week. So, it's like, with no overtime, no days off, he's working 74 hours. Right. It's people who do that shit. So it's like the you know the out like the hours are there you know that's how you see people making 130 140 grand driving a bus and people right. like how it's like nigga it's a board calmly right now that's already at a bean it's fucking July that's crazy <laughs> they, yeah. they, they 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 do pick a 12 13 hour run every day and work both days yeah. off it's just what it is right. you making 31 an hour you can rack that shit up quick yeah so it's like yeah when it's like that you know it's Cool, you got leeway, you right. know, but it's like, yeah, when you get an eight hour joint and no overtime, it's like, you want to cry. Yeah, like, because you living past. I remember my trainer used to always tell me, base your life on a 40 hour check. 
I don't give a fuck what run you get. Always. Yeah. She's like, base your life off of a regular check. Because you're going to look crazy. And they, like, I, I understand what she's saying. So it's like, yeah, that shit is true. Like, yeah. When it comes to jobs with overtime, people definitely live based off their overtime. It's, it's scary. And you have to make sure that even still you outpacing the rate of inflation. Because you can make 130000 and none of it goes to nothing but what's now. Yeah. So then what happens when now... College go right. from twelve thousand a year to thirty thousand a year. I've met with a person and had all the newest cars. I'm her and her son closet. I don't even know how to pronounce half the stuff y'all wear. <laughs> and she's like, I got an unexpected expense and I need you to help me budget it out. And I'm like, what is it? She's like, my son going to college. Un- unexpected <laughs> expense. You didn't know that one day he was going to be eighteen, right? Well, like a seven sixty. <laughs> You pull up in a 760. Yeah. I quit the train because I can't park in Chinatown. (laughs) (laughs) You you got a 760. With nowhere to park the joint. (laughs) Nowhere to park the joint. Unexpected. But this is the, this is the world we live in. And then, you know, we, we laughing about it, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, we dying from lack of financial literacy. Literally, if you know more about how this stuff works, you will pay way less in life. Period. You got people that's out here not paying taxes and we sitting there like, how? Find out. Right. It's people that's out here. I'm not the only person in the city that do, that, is, that does this, right? But I know a lot of people. And I try to tell people all the time, you have to at least come get the information. I hold three free workshops a week. Three. You know how much? You talk about planning. You know how much planning goes into that? Yeah. I have over 65 associates between six cities that I got to communicate with on a, on a daily, sometimes weekly basis. And then people are like, oh, man, I had to. Go do this. Like you said, you, you know, people, it, it's not important to them. And I don't really get stuck. Where on do you do the workshops at? In my offices. So I have one. Tell office, people that. So I have one office in South Philly, 1625 Washington. Chad, you've been I'm in that, that one. Yep. It's beautiful. Beautiful office. office. I mean, it's crazy. crazy right? I'm coming to the one in Chinatown. <laughs> <laughs> and then in Chinatown. That ulterior motive. 10, <laughs> 1020 race, second floor. So in Chinatown, we have workshops on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. And then on Wednesdays, we have a workshop at uh, 1625 Washington Avenue in South Philly at 7 p.m. And then on Saturdays, we have a combined one. So it's either in Chinatown or it's even in Washington. South Philly and it's at 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Weekly. And I'm, and I'm presenting this stuff. You know what I mean? And we have one big event. Like, we just had the Wine and Wealth on Friday, which was a it was a good – it was a yeah. success. I mean, a lot of people came out. Yeah, I saw, I saw, like, I saw like, two different people uh, posted on my Explore page. So yeah. I definitely saw it. Shahada came out. Shout shout out to her. You know what I mean. Um, Bridget. You know she. You know shout out to her too as well. I had a few people that was there, but I admire those people because they 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 roll solo. You don't right. see four or five people with them, but they coming to get knowledge. You know what I mean. And that impresses me because when I'm on stage and I'm talking to thirty or forty people and I'm looking out and I don't see nobody that I can relate to, familiar with. Like right. I heard a little bit every time. Yeah. Because I know that it changed my life and it could change somebody else's life. Look, I was responsible for building financial applications of a private bank, meaning that you had to have at least $25 million in your bank account. To even deal with them. To deal with them in private bank, right? I didn't work in Wall Street. I didn't work in Jersey City. I didn't work in Delaware. I didn't been all over this doing this stuff, right? And these people have no problem with paying anything. They will call their financial advisors all day long. How much money I got today? How much money I got today? And they care about those things because that's how they was bored up. That's how they was conditioned to do. Whereas us, we don't know the importance of that. Yeah. And a lot of people, like even my wife says, she's like, you know, you, you sometimes you, you might live in a bubble. And I feel like I, I can admit that I do. Sometimes I get on a, a mission and I'm dealing with all of my clients that I'm there with. And I look up and I'm like, I haven't reached out. I haven't really, you know what I mean? So I try to brand myself accordingly right. so that I can get, I don't know how to do Insta Snap, which is weird. Like, I don't know how to do Snapchat <laughs> and all that. But I did it the other day, yeah. and you get reaction. I said, you got to meet people where they at. So I guess I got to, you know, focus on, you know, trying to do those things. Or like I said, you know, partner up with people. I like to really partner up with people. Yeah. You were like one of the biggest early Twitter per people. So it's like you would think that you would be able to transition the social media world into that. Twitter is a whole nother beast, first yeah. of all. <laughs> <laughs> so Twitter is one thing. And this is the thing. I had to change my name because I already struggled with become, being Kendall on Twitter, right? right? So I figured if I see Jamil Kendall, it's hard yeah. to really be Kendall, you know what I mean, when I'm trying to be those things. Instagram is a little bit easier because I tied it to my Facebook page and I got all my my contact info right. and stuff like that on my, on my Instagram and it's easier to be able to be those things. But when I do something crazy, oh, they love me. <laughs> they love me. Yeah. P- 
people be like, oh, yes, I say one off the wall thing, not even off the wall, low joke. They're like, oh, he back. Right. <laughs> For whatever reason, they're like, I'm Brother Jamil. <laughs> Jamil Sunflower. <laughs> I'm just, I just went to, I don't know, they would think I went to India somewhere and, and meditated for two years and came back. But, you know, that's, that's good, though, because I speak the character. People yeah. understand that it was a change that happened. And I'm, a pr- I'm proud of that because I was a part of that initial pioneer the philly twitter and you, y'all guys talked about that on the show too one time and it was crazy because man you would have thought we was like new edition or something right you know it was a real thing it, it was it, it was it was a phenomenon it really was it was crazy i couldn't believe it i'll be out and people like yo you the boy i'm like this is crazy. because for a while what was going on and matt no it was everybody was converging on twitter and then slowly everybody started meeting yeah. each other like because the people don't remember prior to twitter Philly was extremely cliquish and like separated yeah. by region. Yeah. Twitter and social media shrunk the city to where now everybody knows each other. Right. Niggas from uptown hang with niggas from South Philly. Right. Niggas from Southwest hang with people from uh, Frankfurt and stuff like that. Like it didn't used to be like that. Yeah, right. Philly was real, real secular and like, yo, we deal with who we deal with. Them it. other niggas cool, we know them, but we ain't cool like that. And now it's like you see people linking up all the time uh-huh. and it permeates into everything. People, friendships, like the type of events that go on, nerf Philly versus South Philly, and yeah. it's like a, it's, all it's, love. A, it's a piece about a, a event about peace and I got love. A, I got like, a, me and my girl got invited to a wedding from Instagram, like for Instagram friends. It's right, like, yeah. it's crazy. It's, it's like real. that's really how it is, and now. it's a real thing. And I think people they real judgmental about those relationships when people get together as friends and all these other things. They don't understand, like y'all said, with the plan in the back end of that stuff. Like people have substantial relationships. Like we go out, and we do things, and there's a lot of people that I can say names on there that I feel like I really have, you know, substantial relationships right. with from Twitter and all those other mm-hmm. things. But people don't see that stuff going on, right? They just see, okay, they just some Twitter guys. They yeah. this, they that, blah, blah. It's almost like if you're not yeah. posting up pictures with people twenty four seven, it's like it's not happening, right? <laughs> and then now they see you with somebody like, well, I you know them. <laughs> Listen, I knew Twitter was a special beast because it was people that was willing to be friends with people from South Philly. I mean, people wouldn't even come past Market Street if they was from York before. Now they're like, I, South Philly having a party, we in right. there. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, Twitter, yeah. we're amazing happens. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, it opened up a lot of world, but I think Instagram brought that whole, you know, I tell people one of the most, to me, influential things that I've ever seen in life, and you, y'all might laugh, on Baby Boy, when they talk about the market stuff, when they be in the, over there when they was selling. And yeah. I said, if you really break down just those three things, that's the probably the best business advice you can ever give somebody. It's people out here that's making it happen, people that's not making it happen, and people don't even know, know what's, what's going, going on. on. Yeah. And it's more people who not know what's going on than any. And that's what's sad about right now because we literally are in the information age. You can pick this thing up right here or whatever phone that you have and you can find out any okay. and everything that you want to find out. And people are just not even taking the time to do the research, not even research, to type a, in a sentence, what is such and such, right. and figure this shit out. Like the other day, Jay, on the Jay-Z record I'm listening to, it, he was talking about uh, the Dumbo section of Brooklyn. And I didn't know what it was, so I looked, I looked up Dumbo up Brooklyn. Up and, and I found and I found this shit, and I'm like, oh, well, often uh, disregarded area of Brooklyn by the water. You know, it was in parentheses, yeah, it said often ignored. Often ignored. Oh, my goodness. And we would talk about that. And I literally stayed up to 4 and 44 in the morning because it was like 2 o'clock when we yeah. were talking about it. I was like, I couldn't go to sleep. Like, I'm literally sitting on the couch. Like, Yeah, I got to figure out what this is. He, no, I went on the rant. I, I I literally tweeted for like 10 tweets. Like, I, I'm, I'm disgusted because we see this happen in our city every day. Now, there might not be 2 million or 25 million, but it's been like 25,000 shelves that's going for 250,000 yeah, in about, new backyards. I'm yeah. like, think about Northern, let's take Northern oh, Liberties. Yeah. Northern Liberties is the most, like, outside of Rittenhouse, it's like the second most prestigious yep. area in the city of Philadelphia as far as real estate values go. Right. 10, 12 years ago, the shit was a wasteland. North you Philly. get your shit pushed back right. in, in Northern <laughs> Liberties. Right. Motherfuckers oh, didn't go past that part of uh, Spring Garden. It didn't happen. And for it to start at 2nd Street, where it was the worst part, It was the worst! As soon as you come across Gerard, that that was you was that was the rap. I remember that. being a kid and like that train station at Second and Spring Garden. You yeah, get yeah, your yeah, issue yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, wasn't yeah, no yeah, desirable yeah, place yeah, to be. Yeah, you would. That shit was yeah. like, yo, oh, I'm at Second and Spring Garden. I better motherfucking protect Second myself. And like Spring Garden was like the principal. Yeah, it's Eddie like Kane being in a fight with, uh, with <laughs> that shit. <laughs> that shit, shit like being in a fight with '90s Mike Tyson. Protect yourself at all times. Like, where am I at right now? Yeah. Yeah. And, and now yeah. you have Second rows and rows and rows of 600, 800 thousand dollar 1.2 million dollar houses over here why because somebody said 
This is next. Mm-hmm. Somebody decided to take the money that they had and develop the area. And that's the only thing that's separating Northern Liberties from Southwest Philly or whatever right. other area that's not developed right now is somebody saying, yo, I like this post office and this uh, connection to the airport. Right. I'm going to put 55 houses over here. True story. My dad, the first house, not his first house, but the house he bought that we grew up in, uh, 77 Buis. The end of our block, 78th Street, mm-hmm. was marsh. He's like, yo, it was it was a field. Yeah, it was nothing there. Like, it was nothing there. Yeah. All them houses down with, like, Dev and all them came in, and then Pepper and all of that shit. Right. That, all that shit came in the 70s. My pop bought the crib for 11 grand, and we sold the joint for bean something. Right. It, it's just like, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. To, he was like, yeah, the house across the street, he didn't think to get, because he was like, I didn't have a family at the time. Right. And it had a garage and four bedrooms. But he was like, yeah, that it was expensive. That was I think that was thirteen six. <laughs> that's like, yeah. like that's expensive, and that's what people don't understand. Like about about development and about real estate is the only thing separating Point Breeze from fucking whatever part of Frankfurt is that they don't have a use for what's going on in that part of Frankfurt right. yet. Once they have a use for it, then they'll develop. Somebody will develop that area too, and all it takes is one person to start with, say a million, two million dollars. I'm gonna build a block of houses, and now everybody's property value goes up because of this 24 houses that's over Should here. Look it on up where I just moved from. Street. Where you at? Like up, up, uh, Roxborough, Manning. It's five hundred thousand dollar homes right there, all through like, there. All through there. The, it's the, crazy. The crazy thing about it all is that example that you said. That's the blatant aspect right. of it. It used to be more subtle than that. They used to buy a house on one block and then build and make it four hundred thousand dollars, and now you have that comp. They, I, I believe. Now you can say conspiracy or not. I believe they buy the house to themselves so they can go on public record that they have a comp for four hundred thousand. And then you know what happens after that? The revenue department come in, they reassess that block taxes for the next year, and then because a lot of those older people who are on fixed incomes with those variable yeah, they raise their taxes, they, they taxes come in go up, sw- and then a year house. later they go foreclose, and guess what? Guess who buy their house? The person who the put, person the, first who put the first house in, and then you know what happened? After that, it get reassessed, and then the cycle goes on and on. And next thing you know, that block, it becomes like he said, a whole strip. Now they just bold, but yeah. you know where they getting that land from? It's even more crazier. You know where y'all headquarters at? Was that 12th and Market, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, on top of y'all, they have the redevelopment program. Mm-hmm. Now the redevelopment program is if you go in the city of Philadelphia and you see any lot and it has the barn fence, that means that the city owns it. If you always notice, is a gap in there. Reason being is because they have to maintain a lot, so they have to be able to fit the they, they, uh, grass cutters mm-hmm. and all that stuff that they, they you know, the, the drive lawnmowers yeah. and stuff, okay. so they got to go and maintain it. But the only purpose of the redevelopment program is to redevelop the community. So they don't care who come along and buy it, right. as long as you, but you have to have the blueprints, you have to have the funding in place, and you have to build it within six months, right? Guess who's coming in getting that stuff? $2,000 lots, the developers. Yep. Because again, the conflict is no conflict of interest because they own the interest is to redevelop the the, uh, the neighborhoods. So that those you see a whole you see like a whole street of of, of barn fences. Yep. They get that let's say ten twenty thousand, and they use the same blueprints for one house and they just mass manufacture that yep. and they put five and six of them a row that probably cost them less than a hundred thousand. Yeah, and they sell them for two, three, four hundred thousand each. I was just driving up. Uh, I was just driving up. Uh, Ridge Avenue, mm-hmm. Francisville. Yes. The other day. Oh my goodness. The the guy uh, who used to own the arson garage, he sold that lot or whatever. They're now building condos and th- them three story modern houses mm-hmm. on that lot. They haven't even gotten to the destruction of getting rid of the arson garage yet. That's last. We're gonna build these houses yeah. first and get these motherfuckers in here and start making some of this yep. money back. But it's like you drive up Ridge Ave and, and you got that development there. Across the street, you got three houses, all them little missing teeth that used to be there. Mm-hmm. They ultra modern houses yep. that that's getting yeah. built. You yep. drive up some more, it's a little uh little triangle joint. Yeah, that's getting triangle built on that. Weird. You go up again, it's another little lot joint that's stuffed there. You go up a little more, it's one that say lot for sale. You go up a little bit more, uh getting closer to uh, like nineteenth. Uh, like we're Gerard, past Gerard College a little bit. It's a big ass John. They yep. building stuff over yep. there, and I'm like, yo, it's going to continue and continue and continue to build up till they fill in all oh. this space. Because why? People want to be adjacent to downtown. They want to be adjacent to 76, the parkways and all of that stuff. Right. So they're just going to continue to just build and build and build and build and build. I got a friend who's a who's a who's a uh, like a small time developer now, whatever. He got four properties in South Philly. Mm-hmm. Um, Right near Point Breeze, it's basically supposed to be done like any day now. We already got buyers for him. The minute that they done, he selling them each for three ninety nine. Nice. Done deal. 
he basically has an investor on the hook to give him six million dollars. But the caveat is, you got to build in Francisville. <laughs> we'll give you the money. You got to build. You got to secure these lots and build in Francisville right. because they want to be in the. That's the next hot spot. Yeah. So people don't want to miss out on this the way they might have missed out on Northern Liberties. Right. So they like, yo, I'll give you the money, but you got to build over here. And 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 knowing all this information, the saddest part is. If you don't have the money on the position to have capital and credit, you just got to sit and let it happen and watch. And that's the sad and part. Just watch. <clears throat> but if people, like, like you said, like you talked about property, or you talk about property. We talk about numerous properties, right? People take a whole lifetime just to get one because they told us this was supposed to be a process that was hard. And I'm around a bunch of people who, yeah, guess what? I just got a, you know, another investment property. I'm on my fourth disinvestment property. Not even including the two homes that they own for them. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we sitting here, and that's why I said all this comes together is important because the the whole goal of financial planning is to be able to see where you at and then see where you want to go. And if you don't know where you want to go, you have somebody that's going to be able to ask those questions or get that information out of you, what your interests are and all these other things, where you want to see your kids is, and then now we can discover those things. Mm-hmm. And then if housing is a part of it, then we help you with that process. If you want to get your credit fixed, you're supposed to help you with that. You know what I mean? We don't have the insight to even start a plan. So we just all over the place. Just yeah. like in business. You're supposed to have a business plan, not just for investor you're supposed to have two one to be a roadmap of your company so you can know what's my exit strategy or what's what's my milestone and one year do i want to make a million dollars in five years do i want to have uh, a new office or a new building in five different cities you have to get those things and that's the most boring part to most people they don't they want to just go out and sell they just want right. to do be in in motion yeah and don't have a plan but you know, that's just really what happens. I didn't realize that Chad got busy on uh, Instagram. We got a bunch of questions. Um, do you want to field some? We got a lot real of financial quick, questions. Real quick, while we talk about the real estate shit, real quick, and last thing, and then we can go to these, go some of these that. questions. Um, for the person that doesn't have a lot of money to be able to go and buy a piece of real estate or whatever like that or mm-hmm. leverage something to get a well, piece of real estate. That's one question going. Um, <laughs> that was going to be a What's a good short-term investment that they can turn over some money to be able to maybe in a, a year, two, three years to get to be in a better position to make a better investment? In terms of like a smaller investment? Like a smaller on, investment. On property? No, on anything. <clears throat> It depends, right? So that's a, that's that question is is relevant to somebody's situation. But if you asking me, first and foremost, you have to maximize the money that you have first, right? I don't think the issue is always the fact that somebody can't get into a property because it costs too much. It's all about credit at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Because it depends on your loan and your income, whatever the case may be. But if you're looking to flip something, the, the formula for wealth in terms of money, you need time. You really need time or you need a high return on your investment. Yeah. The reason why a lot of people get into it, in, um, let's say real estate, is because it averages around 30% return. Yeah. But it's 100% risk, right? So if somebody looking to do something in a quick term is not really set up for you to really have a year's worth of something. You can do what he do. You go to the casino, look at that spinny ball and bet on <laughs> black. I don't play roulette. Well, I'm just saying, go to the casino, period. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's really hard to... It, it's more so the only thing I would say is one of the type of things if, if you talk about somebody if is it somewhere they want to live or is it somewhere they want to no invest? I'm just saying if somebody if or if somebody's in a in a position to where they like all right and my my long term goal is I want to f- be investing in real estate whatever whatever the case may be or or start this business or whatever like that's gonna cost me five hundred grand to start this business okay we're, and they got five grand now right. where do they start investment wise to make some smart investments to where they can turn some of that money over to where it's like even if they get in a ten percent return but it's in six months or eight months or something like that what are some avenues that people can look to as far as a short term investment that can bring some money back in order to the higher the risk, the higher the reward. So in order to really make a lot of money quickly in terms of getting a return on your investment, obviously people look to the stock market, right? But the stock market works, in my opinion, off of what they call speculation. It doesn't really necessarily have anything to do with the performance of a company or even an industry. If Donald Trump says, like he did, they, they selling tax-free cars in Mexico, General Motors shuts the plant down. <laughs> and then they stock drop. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you go into the stock market, I know people make a lot of money into the stock in, in the stock market, but you have to be prepared for that risk. It's a hundred percent risk. If you don't, if, if the stock market goes down, you lose all your money. Yeah. But so, the, the stock market is is more of a long game because 
even if you say if you got you buy five thousand dollars for Apple stock and it drop a little bit and then it's worth three grand, if you don't take it out, you don't lose nothing. Right. But if and if you but if you leave that three grand in and then it go up and now it's worth ten grand or whatever, ultimately you won out. So right. really, if if you, as long as your stock don't go to zero. If you played a long game on a safe company, yeah. usually you could win out or at least break even. Over time. Over Probability time. Is, is set in and it'll start working towards you. I mean, I think, honestly, you, you need to invest in yourself. There's other ways to make money, streams of income and different yeah. things like that. I think if you're looking to um, get that $500,000, you have to work your way up. Yeah. I don't really think is a short-term answer yeah. to that. Are you familiar with Gary V at all? Gary Vaynerchuk? Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vaynerchuk is a basically a self-made multi-millionaire. Yes, I heard of him. And he, I um, actually heard he, he, he has like a, sh- a radio show, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he has a radio yeah. show. He got po- he had radio show, podcast, podcast YouTube yeah, yeah. channel, all that. He's yeah, yeah. been on Breakfast Club, a bunch of other different uh, media outlets, whatever. Yeah. He talks about... He tight. He talk, he's, he's, he's Super he's, tight. He talks about flipping. Right. And basically, like, people literally, like, surveying, uh, surveying, like, the dollar store versus five below... And seeing like, all right, it's some same products that are in five below that are that are for five dollars that right. are in dollar store for a dollar, right. and people can go buy them up, put them, get an Amazon account, put them on Amazon, right. and turn five thousand dollars into eight thousand dollars and eight thousand dollars into twelve. You want to know the most genius shit I ever saw thinking about that? When uh, Beyonce's concert was here, my girl wanted to go, so we went to the concert. It was outdoors. It fucking was raining. So you didn't want to go, just her? Well, I ain't got nothing to lie. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right, fuck, okay. Now, fuck it. <laughs> But we knew it was going to rain. Right. So we went to go buy ponchos. Every store we went to, the ponchos were like, you know, gone. So I'm like, is everybody in this fucking city going to Beyonce concert? Right. Like, finally, we find ponchos up at the Target, whatever, whatever. We get down to the arena. Niggas was outside selling all the ponchos they had purchased yep. earlier right. in the day for a dollar. They were selling them for 20 bucks. Yep. I mean, running them off, too. Cheap little plastic bullshit. Right. I had a poncho with pockets. My poncho was lit. Yeah, I got so, it from Target. So think if you had a hundred of them. Right. Crazy, right? You spent a hundred dollars and you made what's that? If, if it's twenty dollars a pop, yeah, times a hundred, times twenty thousand, twenty grand in one day. You just got to be willing to. No, pull. you sure? Two thousand. Two thousand. Fuck my son. But either way, <laughs> you 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 made an exponential return. Right, right. Just by. Being smart enough to say, hey. Two thousand great when you live in the P. It's like, you, <laughs> it's you, great you live anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, if you anywhere. live anywhere, two, a $2,000 day is a good day. Yeah, real talk. A net $2,000 day is a good day. A tax-free $2,000 day. Yeah. They was definitely they was running off them ponchos. But I, what I was going to get into was, yeah, like, directly, you wouldn't be able to get those returns that quickly to turn around something for $500,000. That's why I say invest in yourself. Understanding what the trends are, it's, you know, business is about supply and demand. So yeah. if you can find something that's hot right now and you can make some money, typically that's how a lot of those one-off businesses even get started in the first place. Because people initial way to do it, it was a means to an end, and then the mean became the end. Yeah. If you, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So like two chains made two million dollars selling dab and Santa sweaters. What? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Two Chainz is a smart guy. I don't know why very he, smart guy. He's always want to act like he's so ignorant. Very smart guy. But I, but I think it's his. I think his part of his business theory is to appear like a common folk and not that smart, so that the common folk will support him, as opposed to like, yo, I'm like this super smart guy that was like a three five GPA my whole yeah. life, and then it's like, oh, nigga, you smart. We don't need to support you. Get your yeah, smart ass out of here. I got you. Let's answer some of these questions. Go ahead. Uh, all right, let me get back in here. Um. All right, we again, please. <laughs> uh, n- non-retarded questions. Uh, we got one. Hey, um, I was wondering, can clearing the delinquency on my credit report improve my score? Yes. Yes. Next question. Wait, clearing the delinquency? What meaning? What? It just says clearing the delinquency. I mean, it depends on what you're delinquent on. Like, there's a. All right, I'm, I'm kind of like a self-taught like credit expert. Like I had a, I based my credit score bottomed out in 2013. I went down to 485, okay. and I and I personally educated myself on credit. Read this book, that book, this seminar, da da da, and self-educated myself on credit, the way it works, and all that shit. Right. So, depending on the type, the nature of the delinquency you're talking about. Yes, getting it cleared can affect your credit score. There's two different types of credit items. 
There's active and inactive right. items. An active item is something that's being pursued to you like a student loan from the government. Right. They're going to actively pursue the collection on that loan. Right. But an inactive item might be like an old T-Mobile phone bill that mm-hmm. they sold to a collection agency that went out of business. Right. Only thing you got to do to get that item off is to dispute the shit. Right. So, right so a general rule of thumb for people out there worried, worried about credit and like negative items on their credit, dispute everything. Whether it's, legit whether it's legit or not, or not, legit not legit dispute, dispute everything. Everything because you never know what's going to come off. And as those negative items come off, that could be anywhere between like 12 to 50 points on your score, depending on how it's overall weighted. And you, you have to also understand that if you think that paying down on a delinquent item is going to affect you positively, it's going to actually false. hurt you. It's yeah. going to hurt you. Because as long as it's st- like, that's why I was saying, is the difference between removing a delinquent item completely yeah. or saying that I paid it down to zero? If it's still on there, even at zero, but it's still listed as a negative it's item, it's still working. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So before you pay anything, you have to first foremost get them to send you a letter to agree that if you pay it, no matter They'll what, remove it, it they will remove it. And then that's how you dispute it off. So, yeah, in that case, yeah. yeah. Of course it will help you. If you remove it, it will help you. Uh, hello. Oh, well, I don't know why. <laughs> hello. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> I have no I'm tired. Good I evening. No, I have no clue why I read that part. Um, I'm looking to buy a home but have less than six months credit history. No student loans, car note, or anything. Growing up, I was told if you can't buy it in cash, you can't afford it, which I now know uh, that's not how it works. So I went to a credit counselor, and the best thing they told me was to get someone to add me as an authorized user on their card, but uh, I don't have anyone I can trust to pay their bills on time. Gotcha. Um, What else can I do? I'm 31, credit score 665. Um, well, I mean, she actually doesn't have a bad credit say, score. Credit score is lit, pretty much. Credit score is decent. I mean, depending on who you go to as far as buying the house, you may or may not be able to get it because if you don't have any positive credit history, you don't have any negative credit history either, but you have a score that's registering. Right, so I'm saying if you have a 665 credit score, how you... how You should you be able to not only buy a house, but be able to buy a house and get some sort of funding right. for a first-time home buyer. I could, you know, co-sign on my K&M. <laughs> <laughs> like, girl, but if she got a 665, that's history. Enough to create a score. Yeah, you have a yeah. score. Yeah, it's, it's a score. But she has to also remember, like I said before, in order to buy a house, you have to have th- three things. You have to have a good credit score. Yeah. Well, sp- a specific credit score, depending on the FHA loan or yeah. whatever they need in order to get approved for the loan. But your debt-to-income ratio, which is the amount of money that you bring in minus... Uh, the amount you that you pay in your debt, and that has to be 20% or below. It's the only time it's good to be below average. Yeah. Your debt-to-income ratio has to be below 20%. And then the next thing, you have to have the money to put the down payment, and you have to have the income, which is the same thing, to be able to fund the loan going forward. Exactly. And you got to have have to have filed taxes for at least the last two years. Exactly. Yeah. That's the one a lot of people forget about. Yeah. <laughs> or a lot of people that self-employed who be ev- <laughs> trying to evade taxes. taxes. Yeah. Then you're going you to go no buy a house. You can't, hard. Yeah, you can't do shit. But what I do tell people is, especially in the finance world, is certain investments that I, I educate people on that still count as streams of income. Yeah. That has a cash value that you can actually use as collateral. Yeah. Without even a work in history. Right, right, right. So. All right. You want to learn more about that? Come, you know. Come to the workshop. Come to the workshop. My wife and I live in an apartment right now. We want to buy a house soon. We were thinking about killing two birds with one stone and buying an income property, living in the upper or lower level, and renting out the other part. Smart. Is that a good idea for first-time homeowners, or should we just chill and buy a traditional crib? Well, you have to first understand what their family situation look like. Right. So if it's just them <laughs> two, then of course. But if y'all got three and four kids, that shit ain't going to work. That's not going to work. <laughs> so at this amount, I, I would say... Everything is it always depends. So I'll create the scenario. If they have multiple kids or they're expecting to have kids within the next one year or two years, then I would say get a single family home. And my rule of thumb is for somebody that's buying their first home, it should be anywhere between a hundred and a hundred and fifty thousand. Especially a single woman who is looking to get married. You want the man to be able to bring you to the next level house. Right. Mm-hmm. And be steadfast in that because you got a lot of women that make a lot of money and then it's like, I'm gonna bring him in when we get married and then right. You cutting yourself short. You should be elevating as opposed to. He should be taking, and I hope people don't take this up the wrong way, thinking that I'm saying that you need the man to take you to the next level. But I'm saying is that the rule of thumb is your first house should be a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand. Now, if you have the type of family structure where as though you don't need a lot of space, then by all means, 
get a duplex. Just make sure you have your renter's license because I've been in situations where people didn't have a renter's license and they was collecting rent illegally. And if somebody finds out about that, then they can sue you for all yeah. that back. So make right. sure you have a good real estate agent that that points that somebody that you trust that will point you in the right, right direction as all of that stuff because they're supposed to disclose that to you. And sometimes, depending on who's underwriting the loan, they'll let you use the uh, income from the other property as income to lower your debt to income ratio. Right. But some won't. So you got to know like who your underwriter is and what their rules are before you engage on taking a loan from them. Right. All right. What helped you change your mindset towards wealth and asset building? What steps can you give someone just starting out? Wait, can you say the first part again? What helped change your mindset towards wealth and asset building? Got you. I think it all starts with your lifestyle, what becomes more important to you. And then once you have those different things that you have to worry about, like wife and kids and all those responsibilities, right. it kind of by default should force you to think about wealth and all these other things. But I told you my background is in investment banking. I mean, I, I was making $23 an hour at like 18 to handle trillion dollar trades. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really need too much motivation after that to be right. like, ah. <laughs> I don't want to be the one servicing the client. I want to be the client eventually that's getting service. So, you know, and then what was the next part of the question? I don't know. I don't know. Because <laughs> uh, I went out of there. What okay. changed my mind? Uh, what what moved me more towards, like, where I am as far as wealth building and all that? Is, oh, what steps can you give up? Was, oh, was, my thing okay. was literally going broke. Like, I talked about it on the show multiple times. Like, going broke and just having, like, a lifestyle to where I'm, like, making not even more than I spend, but as much as I spend to where the point where it's like I'm down to my last $7,000 and I have no idea where my next $7,000 is coming, coming from. from right. That shit is scary. Yeah. And it goes from taking you to having a lifestyle to where it's like you got a $1,400 apartment to living with a friend. Right. Like, right. what the fuck? You know what yeah. I'm saying? That alone will make you be like, oh, no, I got to do something different. You right. know what I'm saying? And to be living... In the last four years, I lived below my means on purpose so that I can now have the money to be able to do shit right. and make investments when the time came right. and I was able to do that. And I and I think um, one of the first steps that you have to, to take to be able to look towards wealth building and all these other things is the mentality. You have to have the mind frame because it doesn't matter what you read, what you watch. Or who tells you anything if you're not ready to receive the information you won't retain any information that somebody says so i say once you get past the fact that you know that this is something that you want to do then you come talk to me and then i'll help guide you through the rest of the process and that's what a financial professional is supposed to do they're supposed to sit down have a conversation with you see what your wants are what your likes are what your financial goals and dreams are and from there you guide them out from every step and then you'll be able to help them see that's what people don't realize wealth is not supposed to be something that you're supposed to figure out on your own these wealthy people got financial advisors right. yeah. who got financial advisors. And councils of people that they go yeah. to that also have money and what they did. And, right. You know what I'm saying? You got to, you kind of, at some point. You, you know kinda, what I realized real quick? You know yeah. what I realized watching Billions? You watch Billions? Yes. Acts don't make any decision on his own. Right. Have, you ever, have you noticed that in the Never. show? He has to talk to his wife. Wags. A Wags or uh, Wendy. Wendy. He can't make a decision for anything. And you know the, the lesson in that? The majority of people he listened to was women. They crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I peeped that while, while, like, this last season. I'm like, yo, he really don't make decisions on his own. Yeah. The smartest people in the world is people who keep smart people around them. Yeah. And I learned that. I had the pleasure to meet the CIO of J.P. Morgan. Damn. Eating filet mignon on 135th floor on Wall Street. It's ridiculous. He said he catch the train to work, and we, oh, man, the sub? You ain't got no car? <laughs> catch the train to work every day. He said he read the Raw Street Journal from front to back. So by the time we get into Jamie Dimon's office, who is you know the everything CEO, that's going on. he has to answer those questions. <laughs> because Jamie Dimon has the CEO, the, he's the CEO, he has the CFO, the COO, the CIO, and so on and so forth. And they all have to go into his office in the morning, give him everything that happened in their sector, and then he has to go into the board of trustees' office right. and then disseminate that same information. Without him, I mean, without them, is no him. Yeah. So it's important to keep smart people around you. You don't have to be the – I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. That means I'm not learning. Everybody pulling information from me. I want to be the stupidest person in the room. Or I want to say stupid, smallest fish. So it's important. Mm -hmm. So I currently own one small row home. I have about forty grand in equity in it. I have a modest goal to buy one or two investment properties a year for the next five years. I don't want to be a landlord. Uh, quotation, been there, done that. 
I'm only looking to flip. My question is, should I use savings to buy investment property or should I use the equity in my existing home? Uh, also, is the requirement for most investor finance and 20% down, what is the best program for flipping? All right. S specific to this point, what I would say is, there's no right or wrong right, answer right. to is this. It ultimately depends on what is your secondary goal aside from being a flipper. Do you want to be a flipper who is also debt free or are you a flipper who is cool with having a mortgage on a property here or there? So if you have forty thousand dollars of equity in a property, you could put and you have a legitimate stream of income. You could refinance that property, get that equity out of it, and then go make your next purchase with that instead of depleting your savings, which is what most investor flippers would probably tell you to do because to to basically use an a inch a, a income generating asset to go and acquire another income generating asset. But are you cool with having that? What's a 20 year mortgage on $40,000 what is it probably like $400 a month or something if like that. that if that so it's like do you are you responsible enough to pay that $400 bill every month <laughs> we're, we're gonna I'm, we're gonna do a uh, real estate we'll flipping show yeah, right. and I'm, I'm gonna have my old head Nate and I think you wanted to bring somebody yeah. else up here so it's like are you are you uh, responsible enough to pay that bill every month or is that too much for you if that's the, if that's the answer to that question is yeah, I don't even want to have to fool with that bill. I just want to be debt free. Then yeah, take your savings and do it. But it's no right or wrong way to do it. You can even use somebody else's money to yeah, acquire the yeah. flip flip property. Also, what I think is I'm gonna get you licensed and build you an agency because <laughs> I feel like you're already there, my brother. Yeah. Right? But no. But in all actuality, again, is people gonna get tired of me saying this? It's all relevant, man. Yeah. It's, it's it's really relevant because people think that they can go into that business aspect without getting a financial, personal financial aspect. I have to see what that looks like. Because at the end of the day, you can do all of what you want to do, but at the same token, like you said, you have to break it down. What are you looking to do? What is your main goal? All right, why? Because my whole thing is people want to get into property, obviously, for money. But what, as a financial planner, I want to know what you want that money for. Right. Because it might be a better way to arrive at that point. Yeah. Now, if you strictly want to get into that because that's what you want to do, then we have to understand the options that you have and what are you willing to do now i think people want to pull the equity out because they hear people do it right they don't really understand how that works you can lose your job today or tomorrow and even if it's 245 dollars or the, the bill's still coming every month you're gonna realize that those friends ain't really that cool because you can't get 400 dollars <laughs> from them yeah and then now the big dream that you had all of a sudden is deflated because now you not only did you lose the house that you already have because you taking the equity out the house that you own now on the property that you had going forward, they got that one too. Right. So you double loss. And then it's going to stop you from ever trying to do anything in life because you felt as though, oh, this is not the way life supposed to work. I'm supposed to just work till I retire, keep my mouth shut. No, you're supposed to have the right plan in place and the people around you to help you see that to fruition. And I think that's what people get discouraged is they go out on a hunch of something that somebody said and you taking advice from somebody who don't even flip properties. Right. So you have to, it just, it just depends. Love the show. I wanted. Why am I reading that part again? Uh, <laughs> hello. Love yeah, the show. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've been a homeowner for nine years in Overbrook Park. Nice. Um, is I want to know is Philly worth buying a home for a family? And I I'm planning on buying my second home within the next year and a half, and uh, using my current home as a rental property. I'm leaning more towards Montgomery County or certain parts of Delaware County because of the school districts mm -hmm. and home features. You know, non-attached garage. Your thoughts. Um. Me and my girl last week, we were looking at a new development in Delaware. Okay. And it's like I kept saying I wasn't going to move to Delaware. But my dad lives there. One of my sisters is down there. Her family, like pretty much all her family is in Delaware. And I look at what you get for mm -hmm. the money in Delaware. I'm looking at a house in Delaware. It's 272 grand, four bedrooms, finished basement, two-car garage on the side, big-ass lot. And it's just like... You know, I, I I go on Realtor and I type in two hundred fifty to three hundred <laughs> grand in Philly, and right. it's like, you know, the top of a poppy store. It's, <laughs> yeah, you ain't getting much. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. You and get the units. District. Like yeah. you'll get it. You'll see an address with a unit A, unit B. It's just like yeah, you get a small little six hundred square foot condo. Me personally, I need. I want the space. I want the yard. I want the deck. Yeah. You know, preferably a pool. So it's like. Yeah, I, I'm going Delaware if I'm staying in this region. I'm going to go Delaware. My my advice is that somebody who lives in Overbrook Park is 
what I like to consider the best of both worlds mm-hmm. because you have the location to where as though it's not necessarily the city, but you have the access to the city. Now, again, what does your family look like? Because if you go to Delaware, it's no social life. Mm-hmm. You have to, I, I believe. I don't, I don't have one. I, I literally, I go home. But I, it's, it changes when you don't have the opp- opportunity to have one, too. Because right. I worked in Delaware for a long time. And at 5 and 6 and 7 o'clock, especially in the fall, it gets dark quick and it shuts down. I mean, obviously, they rebuild it now. But if you wanted more bang for your buck, Delaware is still not that far, right? Mm-hmm. To me, it's a half-hour drive, 495. Yeah. You get traffic, go to back in 13 and come up your favorite place, 291, where you hit the casino and stuff like that, exactly. right? So it's not about distance, right? You do get more bang for your buck. And a lot of times when you go to Montgomery County, it's expensive. Yeah. So you you paying for the school, right? Yeah, for sure. On, on the taxes. They're going to get you for the tuition. So if school is what you want, I say I always say go because – you paying for the schools. You move There's to the a school city? district in uh, Delaware. It has a funny name. Begins with an A. They got the best school district in Delaware. In Delaware? Yeah. Uh, begins with an A. I can't think of the name of it. What city is it in? Uh, I'm about to tell you right now. Best school district. But if she's thinking about moving to the city, what's the benefits of moving to the city if you're already in Overbrook? Is it to get the rental property income? Right. So that you can go and probably live without having to pay much or not. Yeah, because I mean, sh- as far as the city goes, you're already in a good area. You're right. You're accessible to all those things yeah. already. So I don't, I wouldn't. Apoquinamic. Apoquinamic. Apoquinamic School District. And I know I, I always read it. They're like the number one school district in Delaware. Nice. And uh, it's right near Middletown. Like okay. That's okay. Where it's, but their, their school district is like supposed to be like phenomenal. Okay. Like it's like supposed to be like top 10 on the East Coast yeah. or something crazy nice. like that. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I mean, you can, you know, if you, if you, Worried about school districts. Like I told you, I've read that one day, and I, I read stupid ass articles. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, you can find school districts here and there around different areas. So it's like, again, like you said, what are your needs? You right. know what I mean? How many kids? What are you trying to do with them? How long do you want to be there? Because, you know, people will take out a 30 year mortgage knowing they're not going to stay in the house for right. 30 years. So it's all different ways to play it. Like, but like I said, for me personally, it's, I, I don't think I can buy a house to live in Philadelphia because you're just not getting much. Right. For these homes anymore, and for my one of my homies sold a row home on Lindbergh uh, Boulevard for two hundred and four thousand dollars, like crazy, right? Two oh four. It's a seller's market right now, and that's what people also need to understand. The city of Philadelphia is absolutely and truly a seller's market. Yeah. Like you're not really you gonna find some hidden gems here and there, but for the most part, it's not really gonna be in your favor if you're looking to buy something like. Like, the house I just sold, we didn't have no seller's assist on it or none of that shit. Like, we basically got full ads for it. We nice. was on the market for one day we got an offer. No contingency? Like, small shit. So, they did do a... Uh, they did an inspection. An inspection, okay. All right, one last question before we get to direct this up. Um, I was about to go into the high guys at the beginning <laughs> of the fucking studio. <laughs> why do y'all... I don't understand why they write that in the email. Like, all right, whatever. That's a, that's a formal email. Don't discourage that. No, I'm not discouraging it. Please. But it's just, you know... Because if it, you don't even have a subject line, it's going to the spam. Yeah. Anyway, uh, are credit repair companies recommended for anyone trying to up their credit score? Did you, have you ever used any of them? Um, I use uh, Lexington Law. They I wasn't were, gonna give him a plug, but yeah, I, yeah, I, used, I mean, I, I use Lexington Law. I use Law. Lexington Law. That's what literally, like, literally, when they they pulled my uh, experience, I had, I don't know, nine to ten things on there. Yeah, they got every single one. Like literally, my experience is all the loans that I've taken out over there. This is how my credit went up. I started taking out those little bullshit loans, the little thousand dollar, fifteen hundred yeah. that come right out of my check. I got. My caddy, my DTS, that was through my credit union, so it came right out of my check. I literally haven't missed a payment. I uh, didn't right. miss a payment on anything for like six, seven years. Nice. Went to Lexington Law. They got every one of my – all the old shits taken yeah. off. Credit was damn yeah, right. I've tried like, – like, I, I'm, I don't mind giving Lexington Law a plug because I've tried to get around them in terms of like credit repair. I still mm-hmm. got like little small nagging stuff on my credit. Like I, I got – like, but it ain't – it's a far cry from what it was. I literally – when I started – in June of 2014, when I started with them, I probably had like 78 negative items between my three credit bureaus Damn. collectively. And within 30 days, they got it down to like 40 something. And then another 30 days, it got down to like 29. 
And but the problem was after like the initial ninety days, the shit stalled out. Yeah. So what I would do with them is I would like cycle them on and off. I would do like three months on, six months off, three months on, four months off, whatever like that. Like I think I'm about to start back with them because I got like some little small stuff on my Experian report. My TransUnion, my Equifax is beautiful. It's nothing on there. Um, but it's just like the shit works. And if you stay on top of it the way you're supposed to, like every week, like viewing it and calling them and stuff like that. Once your initial disputes go out, if they don't work, they'll send escalation letters gotcha. for you. And that's what a lot of credit repair agencies don't, don't do. do. They don't focus on like the escalation is saying, all right, we verified this is true, but it's this. Da, da, da. They still look for loopholes to be able to get you out of this shit. Yeah, Le- Lexington Law literally got everything off and i throat. talked to a credit guy he's on the lamb right now <laughs> but uh i talked to this credit guy from san diego <laughs> like two years ago his wife left him and he just went on a lamb and he owed people money apparently but uh we had a really good conversation and he told me he was like uh damn what was i what was i saying oh he said he's like once something goes negative don't pay it yeah, yeah. he's like, like, it's like if something goes negative don't I, pay I, it the, the lady from lexington law who's working on my case she was telling me because i was telling her i'm like listen uh, I had something on there from uh, when I was out Utah. It was like seventy two dollars. I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna pay that real quick." And she was like, "No, leave it alone. Yeah, don't because pay the sh- second you make a payment, yeah, it like it's it new activity on that. Yeah, so yeah. like your whole process of it being inactive for five, six, seven it years starts over. Starts over. Yeah. So don't touch it if yeah. it's you know not being. It's good to hear positive stories about Alexis the Law because it seemed like any client that I ever had that had. Went with them. They had a horror story. Yeah, they got horror. It was cool. For me. I had a horror story with like a person that I knew. That, and that uh, was that was the second part of this question. She was like, "I see all these quote unquote credit geniuses on my Instagram. Are they worth it?" I never dealt with any. Person. I would say I dealt with two different people. One was my man. I love him to death. I gave this motherfucker four hundred fifty dollars. He did nothing. Mm. Like I was posting like positive results on my shit from shit that I did, and he calling me like, "Hey, did we do that, motherfucker? You should know if y'all did it." <laughs> If you calling me, asking me, did y'all do that? You know you didn't do it. But Lexi- That's one of ours, baby. <laughs> That's one of ours, baby. You get that credit. But, 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 but Lexington, they charge about $100 a month. We fucking them though, up, right? baby. Yeah. It's a hefty tag. Oh, no, definitely. For some people that's looking to build some stuff. No, it's definitely Yeah, Lexi's definitely a, was a, a bean. Yeah. I got I mean, when I first started off, I had a partner of mine. She was a director. Um. She 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 worked for a nonprofit, but she don't work there now. But I used to refer people to her because their services were free. Yeah. And for the most part, the people they liked it her, but they said that you know because it was nonprofit, they didn't feel like it go all the way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I then I have another person that I work with, um, that I refer clients to as well. And I, I haven't heard anything bad, but you know her yeah. prices is not ongoing. But me myself personally, I you know. I focus on what I, I can do on my own, and then yeah. from there, um, if I wanted to get somebody a player, it probably would be her. Um, but for right now, you know, like I said, I heard Lexington Law. I know what they can do. They do a lot of other stuff too, as well. But that hundred dollars a month recurring. Oh yeah, no, it's definitely a tab. It's, it's like a it's like a gym. A lot of times, I think that's more so yeah, the it's issue. A, it's a bean. because. They pay for it and they don't utilize the service, but they never cancel the subscription. Right. And, and then they, they keep just getting, getting the paid bill. A hundred dollars. Yeah. You look up. That's two hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Well, the I mean, uh, it's been dope. We ran through two hours fast. Yeah, it don't even feel. That was two hours. Straight yeah. talk. Yeah. Uh, get them all your contact information, <clears throat> social media, your agency name, phone number, all that shit, and, e- and email. All right, cool. So, uh, Jamil Kendall. So J A H M E L K E N D A L L. That's my Twitter name. Spell That's my Instagram nice. name. Uh, you said what? You spelled that nice. Like, I used to fuck up. Matt makes me sick. Every oh, episode. I, <laughs> I probably would have messed up Kendall. Kendall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, Jamil Kendall on Twitter. Uh, Jamil Kendall on uh, Instagram. And then on Facebook is Jamil Kendall as well. Uh, my phone number is 215-252-0138. My email is Jamil, J-A-H-M-E-L, Kendall, K-E-N-D-A-L-L-W-F-G at gmail.com. My company is called World Financial Group and Transamerica Financial Advisors. Again, I have three workshops a week on Tuesday nights at 7, Wednesday nights at 7, and then Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. So if you need more information on that, you can contact me. My workshops are free, and my services actually are free too as well. A lot of people don't know that. So when you come and you sit down with me, it's not like a free consultation. Right. It's through the whole process. My services are free. Unless they buy something. Well, obviously, if somebody needs some insurance, I can't right, give it right, right. Yeah, free. It's not you free. know what I'm right. saying? Right. Um, but for the most part, the, the planning part of it is free. And that's to be able to, you know. And what days are the work? You said uh, Tuesdays, 
uh, uh, in Chinatown, Chinatown, 1020 Ray Street, second floor. On Wednesdays, is in South Philly, 1625 Washington Avenue at 7 p.m. And then on Saturdays for the month of July, is in South Philly at 10 o'clock. 1625 Washington. I know y'all got affiliate offices around the country. Can yeah. you kind of give some information for that? Because we got like a worldwide listener base. Um, yeah, so if it's anywhere between Puerto Rico, Nor- uh, North America, Puerto Rico, America, and then Canada, depending on what region you are, you contact me, I can find an office close to you. Okay. One of the reasons why I have multiple offices, affiliations uh, between different cities is because I have people in those regions and they need help. I reached out to the people that I know in those areas and then we connect them. Right. So we, we service the whole America, Puerto Rico, and Canada. So if you're in any of those regions, uh, we can help. So anybody, TRPE, uh, family that need financial advice, contact my guy here. He going to send you to whoever's in your region if you need to meet somebody in person. Right. Yeah. It is free. It is free. And it's free. Throw it's that free. out there. And free if, 99. And it, and also, again, we... Y'all was yeah. downtown for them free hoagies. Over there, <laughs> acting a fool. I forgot about hoagie day. Yo, it was all <laughs> fucked up downtown <laughs> the other day. But but so. but but definitely, um, and my website is Jamil Kindle uh, Opportunity uh, d- uh, at WFG dot com. So okay, and then like I said, if you know if people is interested in becoming a financial professional, um, contact me. and We can help them with that, get them licensed, and teach them about those things as well. Um, allow them to build the agency within the agency as well. So that's dope. That's awesome, man. We appreciate you coming out today. Um, this is again a show I wanted to do for a long time. Yeah, I is, think it's going to be really, really like really been impactful, yeah. and I think everybody going to learn something. Y'all can uh, talk about y'all uh, Twenty One Savage and Amber Rose shit amongst yourselves <laughs> until next week. <laughs> we had a real topic this week with a real guest, man. I just want to say thank you, man. We appreciate sure. it. Uh, everybody out and there, yeah, we'll here, further man. break down four 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 once I fully listen to everything. <laughs> yeah, uh, everybody out there, as usual, thereallismerchever dot com. Follow us on. Um, IG the realest podcast ever. Did you bring my hat? No, I didn't get it done yet. Um, that's bad on my part. <laughs> yeah. um, follow us on IG at the realest podcast ever. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just type in TRPE channel. Come right up and leave comments on everything. Yes, wherever we Instagram, YouTube. Uh, Podbean, iTunes, leave comments, man. We need the comments. We're trying to get back to where we're charting. We're doing the numbers, Definitely. but we're not charting because we don't got no goddamn comments. <laughs> I just wanted to make a quick correction. My my website is jamilkindle.wfgopportunity.com. Okay. And then you go on there, you can find a lot of information. And it was definitely a pleasure being here. And like I said, I'm honored to be here, and I'm glad y'all invited me. And I hope everybody can learn at least one thing today. Yeah. I, pr- I appreciate that. That's dope, man. You guys come a long way, man. I'm proud of y'all, man. Thank you, You man. came along. I'm telling you, his... <laughs> Don't start. I seen his aura. When he <laughs> oh, that's like, the we'll do. Like Charlie <laughs> Murphy. My frustration <laughs> mark, man. Yo, Kendall a whole different dude now. Dope shout out to, to all that. the Muslims who, you know, Ramadan just was upon yeah. us. And, you know, uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing, man. Our city is, is, is turning. A lot of people don't see these things happening. And shout out to my man Carl, too. Yeah, definitely shout out to Pastor Carl. Yeah, we gotta get Carl back up here. Carl is always one of my favorite guests. Yeah, yeah we got a uh, we got AO next week. Yeah, AO's the return of AO next week. Oh, he man. talking about I want a structured, funny topic. I'm like, what are you using? This is your demo tape <laughs> or something else? You gonna submit this to uh, F Fox Sports One or something? Oh man, playing a lot of games. Yeah. But, yeah, man, we appreciate everybody out there uh, in the world listening to the show, man. This is a very big one for us, very important show, something that's, like, near and dear to me because I want to educate y'all as much as possible. We do enough entertaining and clowning on a weekly basis, but hopefully everybody out there learns something from this show. So when you see this one pop up on your timeline, make sure you share it, retweet it, uh, copy the link, send it to somebody that you know because there's somebody out there that can learn something from what we talked about today. All right. We out. Peace.